welcome all you wonderful folks. Hello, Salty Sweet Games. Thank you for that raid. Hello, World 20. Thank you for that host. Um, hello, friends. Welcome back to episode three of The Inevitable Heart. In this one, we are rambling on, apparently. <laughs> um, so happy to have you. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Jess. This is my channel, and I'm so, so happy to be here with these folks to play this awesome, wonderful, weird, and delightful game. Um, <laughs> gonna go really quickly and uh, say our thanks to a few folks. I want to say thanks to Roan, Rick, and Deckard, who make and publish this heckin' heckin' cool game. Uh, check them out. Check out all they are doing. Um, and, uh, don't forget that, uh, our finale lands, uh, squarely on Halloween, and we have another heckin' entire heart RPG bundle to give away. It's not just the game, it's all the heart content. Um, I was looking at it the other day and it includes- In PDF form. In PDF. Yeah, in PDF form, sorry. Um, the, the entire PDF bundle, but it's everything. It's ever. it's literally when you go to the Rowan, Rook, and Deckard page, it is literally labeled like the bundle of everything or something like that. It's a lot of stuff. It's very cool. Um, so they're wonderful. <laughs> um, we want to thank Roll20 uh, for their wonderful Heckin' Spotlight program, for being cool beans and highlight highlighting um, indie streams like us and lots of other folks. Um, and also that's where we are running our Heckin' Heckin' Cool map, which you can see right now. Let me zoom out so you can see how pretty this thing is. It's very cool and Jordan has done a lot of work uh, to give us all cool flippable tokens and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can see me fiddling with it sometimes during stream, because <laughs> it's my viewpoint that you're getting. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're also using all of the Heart official Roll20 soundtracks, which feature some very cool spooky tunes. Not so much tunes, more like noises. <laughs> A atmospheric... Ambiance. Oh, uh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Din, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I think that's it for me. Thanks to the folks that make these cool games. Thanks to uh, Roll20 for highlighting us and their awesome resources. Check them out if you don't already, because, um, you know, we all have to stay separate right now. But doesn't mean you can't play games. You can still play lots of cool games on Roll20 with your friends all over the world. Um, and thanks to you, Cool Beans, for being here to hang out. Uh, my name's Jess, it's my channel, and today I'm playing Melifera, owner of a new tooth, mm. apparently. <laughs> I don't know if you're the, I don't know if they're the owner of that tooth. <laughs> <laughs> you have a new roommate. How about that? Yeah. You can get some use out of it if you can find it. Yay. <laughs> So happy! Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so that... <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. You're welcome, chat! Um, and don't forget, if you if you missed the last episode with all the wonderful things, uh, like uh, Ochre going through the timey-wimey, uh, Roa's new um, possible smoochable book friend, uh, Vantage's uh, bad at, like. Vantage is that person you know that can kick everyone's ass, but then just instead... You're cool. lucky that they don't kick your ass, because they, they they take the time to actually speak and unwind situations. Because you know, like, should they have to do it, you're in so much shit. Like... <laughs> Anyways, catch up on the YouTube, and then come back here and hang out with us uh, live. But let's go around and say hi to everyone. Uh, let's go around next and say hi to Sharon. Hey everyone, I'm Sharon. Uh, pronouns she, her. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Chew underscore Baca. I currently play Ochre, who is, um, a hound, which is kind of like a, uh, a caretaker protector of havens, uh, even though right now, I am not in my own haven and doing a kind of diplomatic tribute mission of sorts, uh, which is um, a very interesting thing to do in a place as chaotic as the heart. Awesome. Um, next going around is Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. 
Uh, my pronouns are they and she, and I play Vantage, who's pronouncing they. Uh, the rudeness, tuteness, cow person. Heart before you start to see that. <laughs> uh, it's so good. I was trying to retire to just being a gravekeeper. It's fine. We just have to deliver this bone dog. <laughs> and then everything will be fine and we could go back into quiet retirement, right? This is really right? a show that you have to go and watch the previous episodes, isn't it? <laughs> we just trying to get rid of this bone dog. I'm just trying to get rid of this bone dog. <laughs> that's why. Tooth... That's get rid of his strong. Return bone dog. Questionably, maybe steal bone dog. It's fine. Yeah, it could be a foster fail situation. We're not yeah. sure yet. Yeah, we gotta yeah. see. See, that's why. That's why I said my I said what I said, and then promptly went like. If you're if you're not caught up on this, you should go check out the YouTube. Stay here, enjoy this episode, and then go check out the YouTube for further context. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause it's it'll be good both ways. It'll be good out of context and with it, honestly. Uh I'm sorry, but also I'm not sorry. Let's go say hi to Ryan. <laughs> hi everyone. I'm Ryan. I use he, him pronouns, and I am playing Roa, the witch, who uses he and they pronouns. And Roa banished to heart for reading, because reading is a no-no in their order. And now I may or may not have a crush on a book person, so we'll see where that goes. What a twist! <laughs> Oh no! You love the thing you hate the most? <laughs> this is the best worst kind of enemies to lovers. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> you good? We <laughs> good? And on that note, I'll I'll throw it over to Jordan. Jordan, do you wanna do you want to um you know herd these cats? <laughs> Uh, it is my job every other Saturday on go underscore JG, uh, twitch.tv slash go underscore JG. Uh, I'm Jordan at Made of Cartoons uh, in the places that are uh, good to find me, which is Twitter and sometimes Instagram. I'm the, D I'm the GM, um, storyteller, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, this uh, our last game ended very explosively, so I'm going to start this game with uh, that same energy. But I will remind everyone um, that we do have a little way for you to interfere with the goings on. Um, as we learned last week, uh, doors can literally open from anywhere uh, in hearts and strange people come spilling out. And if you'd like, if, if you'd like something weird and strange to fall out of a door, uh, you can you can just click on the little red button that's down in the um, sort of the about section below the video that says uh, just that, knock at the door. Um, and every time we hit the $50 marker, uh, I have to I have to throw some kind of wrench in the works um, in the form of a new unusual person or creature showing up. Um, so yeah, uh, all of that money gets uh, divvied up between all of the perform uh, performers, isn't the right word, the, the uh, players here, um, uh, at the end of the show. So, um, you know, if you'd like to show support and also have a little bit of a, a put a little bit of your uh, force of will on this on the story, then please, uh, you know, tip these wonderful players and uh, we'll see what happened last time. A very strange uh, drow hunter fell out of a an, an old oak doorway and uh, almost got everyone killed um, and then wandered off oblivious. Uh, OK. So we'll dive right back into it. Uh, a person just exploded outside of Rubius Crowther's inn. Uh, he was shot. Uh, it was an incarnadine shot by some kind of bouncer with a shotgun. And um, uh, his last words were, you really shouldn't have done that. And now uh, meat, bone, and silver coins are have exploded uh, all over this part of the uh, part of the red market. And I'll need everyone, everybody, to make a evade haven roll. 
or or resist um, if you're just if you just want to take the lumps uh, and try and 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 grit through it. Uh, sorry, injure, evade, or injure. Hey. Sorry, I didn't mean to give you a skill that didn't exist. Uh, <laughs> um, now, so have none of those skills. That's so the you're question gonna... I was gonna ask. <laughs> you're gonna roll one die. Okay. You always get one die unless uh, unless there's difficulty, which I haven't introduced yet. Okay. I have to remember we're rolling D. D10. Ten. Tens. There A we D10 go. plus one. Uh, you get one D10 plus one if you have the matching skill plus one if you have the matching domain. So the <laughs> skill skill is evade or endure. The domain is haven. All right. Hey. You got 10? Dang. Oh, nice. I got a 9 and 10, so I'm actually a little upset. <laughs> I could have saved one of those for later. <laughs> um, and I got a 10 and a 4. And so a 10? You, you take the highest result? Yeah. Um, I got a 6. 6? Okay. And what'd you get, I got Jess? an 8. I got an 8. An eight. Okay. Um, un unfortunately, Roa's reaction time is oh, no. for, for whatever reason not as fast but still fast enough to sort of get behind half cover or whatever um the i imagine the situation with you ochre and vantage rolling the tens is that you knew this was going to happen i want an incarnate every incarnadine is rigged to blow when they die um and it's it's the um it's the, if I can't play with my toys, no one can philosophy of the Incarnadine. So they want to destroy everything that's on the, on their person in order to make sure that nobody can have it when they die. Um, so I, I would imagine Ochre having made many visits to the Red Market, you just kind of grabbed on to Vantage and Melifera and just pulled them in behind a cart in time. Uh, and Roa, what, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make life complicated for you right from the beginning and ask a question, a leading question. Which member of your former or your uh, estranged order did you see going into this inn uh, just before, oh. before this happened? You're also going to take some some blood damage, but I will. Um, yeah. Let's just um, that in a second. I think I saw someone who joined the order around the same time that I did, and we were something like friends at the beginning. Um, like kind of going through our initial rites and training and probably some kind of initiation process together. And while we weren't necessarily super close towards the end of things, because I was kind of going off my own um, blasphemous tangent, uh, I think we were still, like, there's still a certain kind of affection for each other. Uh, until it all went wrong, I guess. Yeah. OK. Um, do you got a name for me? Oh, I'm terrible at names. Okay. Um, we're gonna say their name is Myrna. M Y R N A. Sounds good. And they are. Uh, we'll say they're a human as well. Um. What's the symbol of your order? What was the thing that made you realize? Because imagine they, I mean, like everyone is moving through the red market. They're kind of hooded and and, and uh, trying to keep to themselves. But what's what's the symbol? Did we come up with the symbol yet? I don't know. We didn't. I was I'm putting you on the spot three times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a. Um, it looks like a book but the words have been melted off they look like they're kind of dripping down mm -hmm. okay. the page I like, that. I like that 
All right. So your eyes are drawn to that symbol, and you realize that Myrna is here. Um, and that means that you do not notice... You don't notice the runes starting to kind of burn across the, the flesh of the Incarnadine, um, which is sort of the only... the fuse before the explosion. Um, and so you rolled... You rolled a six, uh, just to give you a behind the curtain thing. So basically, the way it would would have worked, if failing would have done D6 blood stress to you, and a, and a partial success is reducing that down to a D4. So uh, a failure means you would have completely taken the D6, and a success means you didn't take the D6 at all, uh, which is what happens. Um, all right, shall I roll for that? Uh, well, I'm just going to roll the D4 for you. So okay. I get to, oh, one blood stress. <laughs> take that. And then I roll for fallout, correct? That's right. So literally bone and silver shrapnel just are flying and sticking into every surface. Um, and uh, go ahead and roll. Got an eight. And I only have three total stress, so. All right, so you hang on to that little blood stress for now. Um, yeah, uh, kind of it's sort of gold tinged gore kind of covers everything uh in the in the radius around here you were kind of on the outside there are a couple of people who seem to have taken a lot of damage and go limping off uh or are, are like carried away by their serfs or um a couple of people get thrown so far that you don't know where they are but you don't think that, that they survived um but the red market cruel as it is sort of settles back into the buzz as uh you know the, the the with the um the evidence that this is something that happens just something that happens but it's a stark reminder that every incarnadine walking around here of which there are many will cause that exact same effect upon death um and so chain reactions are something to keep an eye out for Luckily, the luckily or not, luckily for him, <clears throat> the the large man with the shotgun was able to close the wooden door to the inn, uh, sort of as a shield. And now silver coins and bone shards just um, cover it um, as you as you walk up to it. Um, your puppy ward, your your friend uh, uh, Jewel is so excited to be home. They are just just bouncing around. Um, they they get distracted briefly by a chunk of incarnadine meat, uh, which uh, if, if you they go unchecked, will just eat. Um, but... Oh, no, Jewel, Jewel, don't. That's... That's not, that's not. Okay. You're gonna get between <laughs> a bone dog and its meat. I'm going to attempt to reason with Bone Dog that it shouldn't eat the meat on the floor. Okay. <laughs> Give me a compel wild, please. <laughs> I knew I should have taken oh, that. <laughs> Your um, wrangling check, as it were. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be very good at wrangling. It's going to be fine. Woo! That's 10, actually, on my soul die. <laughs> okay. You manage to reach forward and snatch the meat um, before uh, you have to pull it out of their tongue, which they use almost prehensilely to pull it into their mouth. I think it just um, wraps around yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you so snap it. But that. You snap it, and you can see there's a um, very shiny silver coin in this chunk of meat, um, and they they do kind of litter litter the, the ground around here. Well, I mean, the meat's already in my hand. Probably can just take the coin out. Okay. Pop that into your pocket. It can't be cursed. If it's... it's it, 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 Is it cursed? Probably not. It's a it's a gut coin. It's fine. Yeah. Um, it's the safest place to keep your money. Is inside of your gut. Uh, so, um... Yeah, you're now outside of the of the the Rubius Crowper's Inn, the owner of this pup, and everything has unfortunately gone back to no normal, just a little more 
blood and bone soaked uh, in the vicinity of the explosion. Yeah, I reach down to pull out a little chunk of flesh that my uh, the heel my the heel of my shoe like got that got stuck on the heel of my shoe. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I say, <laughs> all right, Jewel, you ready to see your owner again? Um, the Jewel is not very bright, but you can tell based on their enthusiasm about where they are is that they cannot wait to go inside of this building. Okay. All right, let's open the door. Let's open the door. Um, this is the uh the red market's hive of scum and villainy uh, as far as as far as uh, you know every every area needs something like that and as you push the the kind of swinging door open you um you see all walks of life there's a lot of incarnadine here I mean, most of it is incarnadine that are um swindling each other back and forth in games of chance um making deals you can see many contracts being signed and 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 um people having their heads shaved into serfdom like almost immediately uh upon putting their name on the dotted line but then there's also just other folks um roa you immediately notice that both um myrna is here that you saw before but also um uh montserrat is here the bookbinder yep and so um uh they you immediately i don't know go red or whatever it is uh that you would do in this situation but you you you're kind of caught between your the two worlds of you of your existence here and um uh there are there are kind of these lower like sunken areas that 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 are filled with very like comfortable silk um, pillows and, and blankets and things that have um, you know de- hookah like devices that, that the various uh, folks kind of indulge in. Um, the uh, the smell of like a tobacco kind of smell fills this place, um, and then there's a bar, and then somewhere difficult to see. It doesn't have a mezzanine like like it doesn't have like a yeah, mezzanine that looks down like some bars and taverns do. Um, somewhere there has to be the rooms that uh, are for rent or, or, or for the in, the in rooms so that you can get from the main. Um, and at the back, where there would be a bar, um, there is a bar, but but it's it's a lot smaller and off to the side. But at the back, as you come in, you can see um, this uh, very similar, you know, aesthetic to the other incarnadine that you've seen is sort of this gilded throne this one is less um stylized and more looks like an actual kind of wood and and metal throne um and sitting on it is what you have to assume is rubius crowfer uh who is sort of a friar tuck worship the devil uh he's like he has this kind of rosy cheeked uh friendly look to him and he is eating off of this massive plate of meat um but uh he's all in red and he's he looks both like his outfit and his own flesh is bursting at the seams uh from excess and um sitting on either side of him are more of these borzoi type dogs um there are three two on one side one on the other, all on ornate pillows, and there's a fourth pillow that is empty, uh, that obviously uh, belongs to Jewel. All right, so I think when we walk in, when we see this, Vandal is gonna shout, "Ruby's Crawford!" You're just gonna I yell, ha- "Ruby's yeah. Crawford!" Out? <laughs> "Ruby's Crawford, I have something that belongs to you." Um, there is an immediate hush across the crowd, uh, because the only, no one should have what belongs to Rubius Crowfer, and certainly no one would yell that out loud. 
Um, I certainly wasn't expecting it. And so um, the crowd, there, a hush goes over the crowd. And everyone looks in the direction of the of you four Delvers, uh, including um, Bookbinder Montserrat and Myrna, uh, both now aware that Roa is here as well. Um, and uh, Rubius Crowfer looks down his corpulent nose uh, across the room and says, most people who say that out loud end up my next meal. Your dog got loose and I would like a finder's fee. Your life is your reward. And then he just kind of makes a kind of sound as if to try and um, uh, to summon Jewel over and a snap, just a snap of his fingers towards the pillow. And uh, Jewel starts to run, starts to like, starts to kind of get excited and start heading and then stops and turns and looks at Vantage and the rest of the group. And there's a there is no flesh on this dog's face uh, for those joining us for the first time. It's just a bone. It's just the skull with like wet eyes just sort of rolling around in the sockets and a tongue because it's unbound by the, the flesh of the jaw and the face. It's so long and so dangly um, uh, that it almost drags on the floor when it, when it pants. And yeah, uh, all this to say is that uh, Jewel hesitates for a moment. And Rubius Crowfer says, What have you done to my dog? Uh, he snaps again. Been nice to it? That's a... Uh... We came all this way to make sure your dog got back to you safe and sound in one piece. And I think that merely allowing us to leave with our lives is a uh, insufficient reward. It's uh, refreshing to hear someone in such a low position admit the valuelessness of their life. Exchanging eyes right now. Yeah. With vantage. <laughs> like the deepest sigh. <laughs> Jewel, he, he he says, Jewel, heal, and snaps his fingers one more time, and Jewel moves another like third of the way, but then comes back uh, immediately and just uh, like starts nibbling and 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 chewing on on Vantage's hand. Um, uh and he says, Rubius Crowfer says, what, what is this betrayal? I think Vance is just gonna completely ignore uh, him and like kneel down to get to eye level with this dog and be like, what's wrong? We brought you all the way home. It just makes this hollow, uh, whining, whimpering, and like bumps its head up against your your face. Aww. Uh, bumps the cold, its skull. The cold bone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess that's not so weird for Vantage. Right? Honestly, we've been with this dog for like a day and a half, and if something happened to this dog... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I'll this fully creepy admit, bone dog. <laughs> I'll fully admit because that intro of the dog showing up at the beginning, that was my my little uh, homage to the thing because that's how the movie The Thing starts and it's a body work. And my what happens to that dog in The Thing is not good. Uh, it does get a bone face oh, no. eventually, uh, oh, which no. is also it's a terrible. reference. But it turns into a monster, and I was kind of intending to do something like that uh, because really that's what should have happened. But uh, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. So I'm giving you the opportunity, the very dangerous opportunity, to perhaps keep this this pup. But all right, Jewel. 
here's the deal. You go back to your awful daddy, and next time you get loose, you just come see me again. Hmm. I'll... <laughs> There's no way for this dog to, this thing to understand what you just said. Um... Go. Not only not only does he speak a different language, which is dog, he's also a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> he's a himbo. He's a sweet, sweet, dumb boy. <laughs> Bloody Crow- bony himbo. Crowper Beautiful. Says, Crowper says, if you if he will not heal on his own, you will make him heal. Bring him here. I can I can I do a thing? <laughs> God, sure. <laughs> I, if you if you don't mind, um, since since Vantage is down, reasoning with this creature, which is not listening, which I do not understand, because Vantage is being very reasonable in our mind right now. Um, <laughs> we would uh, like to uh, step forward while they have their conversation and present ourselves. Am I able to use my sacred sacred geometry pristine here? Uh, I can read it to you. Do you want me to read it to you? Yeah, it's when you first arrive in a haven after. But this is a new place, and I haven't used it yet. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. It just gives you you mastery on the roll, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (sighs) All right. So, so while Vantage and the Puppo are are talking, as you do. Um, Melifera is going to step forward, and we are going to speak to this person uh, who is addressing us, and uh, just clarify for them. Um, well, it seems to me we have already done you a service, bringing you back your dog. However, now you are asking us for further service by training your untrained mutt to, uh, to follow your command because you did not do a sufficient job. I apologize, but that seems as if you already didn't want to pay for the first service. Now you're asking a second. There's certainly a fee here that needs to be discussed, and then perhaps your creature can return. Rubius Crowfer is turning into a blood red pimple that is about to pop. He is so mad and just sh- quivering with rage. I, we are pretty sure we are being very reasonable right now. I need a compel haven roll, please. Dang it. <laughs> uh, compel, compel religion. Okay, but also I have mastery on making a good impression. <laughs> yeah. Which is com- uh, you're compelling, so. Uh, so uh, does that mean I get an extra dice? Mm-hmm. Okay. You have compel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're gonna roll three dice. Uh huh. That's what I got. Don't let me down, spider dice. I know you should be B dice, but I don't got those yet. So come on, spiders. Maybe we can just paint wings on them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I rolled real bad. <laughs> Hang on. Oh. <laughs> I rolled really, really bad. Uh, I rolled a four, a five, and a six. However. As a deep vaporist, the number six is sacred to me, you see. And I did, in fact, just take the majestic sacred geometry additional uh, minor advantage, which means that once per situation when you roll to resolve an action and you roll a six, it counts as a ten. Okay. Um, the Rubius Crowfer listens to your your um, logical argument. Um, I, s- I swear we are not intending to be rude. We think and, we are being very reasonable. Oh, I know. I know. Um, and bef- at, like as you speak, he begins to literally foam. Like, out of his mouth uh, is just this golden-tinged kind of spittle that is just um, like just dribbling down his face he's so mad like his teeth are clenched so tight you think they might shatter in his mouth and then when you finish speaking he just starts to chuckle like I need to get myself one of these 
the Red Queen's Red Queen's uh, apiarist has made me very jealous indeed. Fine, I have a bargain for you. Rut row. That was out of character. I didn't just Scooby Doo <laughs> in character. I promise. <laughs> It's okay, I thought that came out of my mouth, honestly. <laughs> that could be Jewel for all we know. <laughs> I mean, they are the missing link. I don't know who the rest of you are in the Scooby gang, but, uh, <laughs> but he, he can definitely be your uh, Ruby Roo. So, um, hey, Ruby? Jewel? Ruby oh. Oh. Wow, thank you. Jordan. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh... There is, uh, yeah, he chuckles and um, starts to, uh, he, he, he beckons Melifera and the rest of you to come forward. I'll definitely step forward with Mel Melifera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll stay. <laughs> we will stand for a moment until Ogre at least comes we will to stay our with, side. We'll stay <laughs> yeah. as a group, I think. Two things happen, Roa. The two people, uh, the two people that noticed you are now making their way through the crowd at the same time towards you. Oh, is it um, one of those things where they don't see each other, so they're just walking parallel, but they don't know it, or? Yeah, they don't know. They they don't realize the other one is moving forwards towards them at all. Yeah, they just think okay. they just think they're exclusively doing it. And uh, Ochre. There is a heavy gloved tap on your shoulder, and uh, Cletus uh, has squeezed his way in. And he says, Oh, Ochre, a word? Um, I'm a little busy right now. Gonna be, gonna be quick. It's important, than you owe me from yesterday. That's or true. earlier. Yeah. Whatever, time is meaningless. Can you meet me outside? Uh... Or fall, just, I just, I need a word. And kind of insistently... Okay, yeah, I will uh, put my hand in Melifera's sh shoulder and just say, it'll be just a second. And I'll step out with Cletus. So um, it's only Vantage, and in my view of things, it's only Vantage and Melifera that actually make it up to Rubius Crowther because Roa is distracted. Um, <laughs> yes, I was going to say, like, I think Roa is just kind of like eyes darting from side to side and kind of frozen in place. Blue screen. <laughs> Bro is no good for that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will ask what Roa uh, does. Um, what's your plan here, Roa? What do, are you going to bail? What's? I think, like... To give you a little more context, uh, Myrna looks like they are going to... You can't see. There's, this place is really crowded, but... They're walking like someone who's got a knife in their hand. You're pretty sure they don't, but you just have this idea that they are upset. Hmm. Um, the uh, bookbinder, Montserrat, you can't tell. It, their face is a book, so. Uh, um, despite the irony Doesn't of having a book face. that mean you could read them? <laughs> like I was going to say, uh, <laughs> ironically, the book face person is very difficult to read. Um, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, actually, I have the old blood. Uh, when you observe someone for a few seconds, you can read their aura and discern their surface level emotions. So I want to get a better read on, um, on Montserrat. On oh, Montserrat. Um, yeah. he, they're not moving with any urgency. They, they seem to just, um, have, it's like seeing a friend or someone they're, inter you're, they're interested in, um, and you also kind of get the idea that they were maybe talking to someone that was boring or, or you know, they, they, whatever, whoever they were with wasn't, um, wasn't ex interesting. And so they're using you, uh, you as an excuse to get away from that conversation. Mm. I, I'm going to, Roa glances at Montserrat and just like, acknowledges that, like, yes, I see you too. But I think seeing Myrna is a more shocking thing and has taken more of Roa's uh, attention. And I turn to Myrna and... And so you just let them, you let them approach? Yeah. 
Myrna is moving faster, so Myrna will get there faster. Okay. Myrna? Their face is just uh, red with anger, and there's like tears running down their face as they look at you. It's been a while. Do you think I have anything to say to you? Well, if you are walking towards me, I assume there's something. I was leaving, and you were you were on the path to the door. Well. It's at this point, unfortunately for you, awkwardly for you, that Monserrat shows up and his or their origami hand uh, reaches up and taps on your shoulder and, and says, uh, with a flap of their page, their book says, Rua, I am ex I'm thrilled to continue our conversation from earlier. I was hoping to run into you here. I um, was speaking to the most boring uh creature i uh in i just i i would you like to um i, I don't imbibe myself but i could could we perhaps um uh, share on a share mead or something i and myrna's face uh as a literal book person uh walks up is um it goes from anger to uh feeling like her expression goes to uh, just feeling sad for you, like you have been lost completely. I, I'm sorry, uh, Myrna, monster. I. Myrna says, "There's nothing. I see. There's nothing that you can say to me now, either." We were friends once, Roa, and so I will not tell the order of what I've seen here. Hey. But that, that is, this is the last time I do something kind for you. Roa the Betrayer. Mm. She, uh, Berna looks over at the, at Montserrat, who is, his page, a page in the book flips as the only sound that the two of you hear as they kind of just document uh, what's happening very, very coldly, it seems, just not understanding what's going on, just observing. And Myrna has a full body shudder, basically. Like, this is, this is blasphemy of the highest order. But Myrna, if you find a way, I'm in baffling din. There's more to this than what it looks like. Um, she, uh, Myrna says, "You think I'm going to come looking for you? You think I'm going? You're going to drag me down to whatever profane level you find yourself at?" This is literally a walking representation of everything that we loathe. And she and they gesture at Montserrat. Treating treating them like an object, basically. Mm -hmm. We're done, Ron. And I hope for your sake that we don't cross paths again. I wish you well. Silently, Myrna looks at Montserrat with a, a, a look that should really set the pages of his book face on fire, um, and then leaves, storms out. Montserrat says, I will not pretend to understand what happened here. Um, are you all right? I could really use that mead right about now. 
Oh, good. And then their uh, page, uh, <laughs> page flips uh, again, and uh, they sort of start to drag you over, take you over, to, not drag you, but guide you over to um, <laughs> the small little bar. Uh, okay, um, we'll swing back around to uh, Melifera and San- Vantage in a second, um, but uh, the urgency of uh, Cletus and Ochre, I think we'll get that out of the way quickly here. Um, uh, Cletus is um, he lights a cigarette when you, you know, when you come out um, and he offers you one no, I'll take it okay uh, he lights it with the end of his and he says um, shoot what was the guy's name the hunter guy uh, Clifford Spray yeah uh, so you redirected I, I heard about the incident with um uh, in the Queen's um, court. Uh, With the hunter? Yeah, that appeared out of nowhere. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and you you suggested or, or, or encouraged them to start heading for the for the um, the ramble? It was the closest thing to a wilderness that he wanted. Okay. Well, it seems as though he may have um, well, he made a point of letting everyone know that he was skint, um, and then uh, also made a point of just grabbing everything he could on his way out. Now, a certain amount of shrinkage, as we call it here in the red market, is uh, is a standard, of course. Uh, things will go missing. Um, but uh, he took from some folks who were less than pleased uh, about it, and between you and me and the exploded incarnadan i think um i think their form of justice is probably a little um i i just think maybe we should make sure that 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 he is uh treated properly in the eyes of you know governance so what i'm saying is is that i need you to uh tracking skills uh, are needed uh, see if I can uh, keep some of the some of the red merchants from overreacting. Yeah, I, I have a feeling the ramble's going to be overflowing with serfs uh, in the next uh, little bit. So if you can kind of get ahead of the red wave, as it were, I, I would I would greatly. I, I just think it would make my job around here a little easier. Was this some of the unrest that you were talking about before? Um, uh, this this spray, pardon the pun, made a bit of a splash uh, uh, around here as well. So I, I'm a little concerned that uh, that things have escalated to a point uh, beyond the norm. Uh, right. I would send some hound, other hounds after it, but I don't trust them to do the job. Half of them are in there, and he gestures at Crowfers. Yeah, um, I'll kind of, like, tap the ash off the edge of my cigarette and say, well, I'll see what I can do, and try to not, I I try to not make too many promises these days, but for you, Cletus. Finish, finish up your business. Deliver the dog, pick up supplies, but, um, you'd be doing me well. You'd be repaying the favor if you could do this. Yeah, and I'd say you've got three bells before there's any trouble, uh, real trouble, maybe two. I'll do my best, and I mean, a well-timed drink is nothing short of a miracle in my book. So, I was there when you when you needed me, Ogre. And I'll be here when you need me. So. Hmm. I'll uh, try to get this tidied up without too much more dispersal of flesh, and I'll kind of like kick a chunk that's still on the side of the road, uh, and then we'll get on our way. Thanks for letting me know, though, Cletus. Uh, thanks for taking the task on, Ogre. You got to get back inside. But you take care. There's a, like a release of steam uh, from the armor that he's wearing uh, that, and uh, and he sort of 
does a couple fingers salute at you and then immediately like notices a squabble happening and sort of starts to stomp over towards and he's like break it up break it up kind of like do a little bit of a salute back even though he's not paying attention and head back mm-hmm. inside okay so all this time uh all this time rubius crowfer has just been looking uh Melifera and vantage up and down and um and says I assume simple cash in hand is not what you're looking for for reward. Something more interesting, perhaps. What is it that you want? And keep in mind, I may already know. I think Vantage is going to look at Mara Lafera. You are the one that asked for a reward. <laughs> what did you? I was personally fine with just cash. Oh. Should I ask for something else? I mean, I suppose money is the most practical. But objects could be interesting. Do you think you already know what we want? I have a good idea of what the beekeeper would like. We are interested to hear your proposition. Um, so for the first time, Crowford doesn't move very much, um, but he, he leans forward a little bit, just just a little shift, and six more eyes blink open on his forehead. I want you to imagine sort of like a kingpin from uh, Daredevil or whatever, kind of like that, like like in uh, Into the Spider Verse, like mm-hmm. over exaggerated, chunky man, yeah, uh, and little round, blobby head, blobfish type head, and. Uh, um, yeah, he leans forward and six more eyes blink open. I, too, have been visited upon by our humble host. The hut. And... I've been gifted with the sight somewhat, and I can see something unwanted has burrowed its way in. Dang it. <laughs> we were not interested until he said that. <laughs> so he shifts again, and you can see that he's kind of uh, got like robes. He, well, he could definitely he has robes on, um, but his the, the lower half of his body has become very slug-like, and um, he uh, reaches over um, to grab onto uh, uh, the little uh, end of the hook, I don't know the different things, to take a little puff, and blows um, heart-shaped smoke rings into the into the air. A second set of arms pokes out from the robes and grabs some kind of uh, snack that gets thrown up into his into his mouth. It's like a mix of like Jabba the Hut and the caterpillar from uh <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. It, it might That's be amazing. Exact, it might be exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Jabba the caterpillar. <laughs> Um, like, thanks, I hate it, but in the nicest way. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Sucks. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we turn back to Vantage and whisper aside. Um, 
the money might be a, a better get overall, but we are feeling off from... I wasn't saying this to you, I was saying this to Vantage. We're doing a whisper. Uh, We're doing a whisper! I communicate, I fully said. <laughs> Excuse you. This is our time. We're having a time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do carry on. Look, uh, I'm concerned about that tooth oak or saw. So if he could help you with that, that's fine. That's that's reward for me. Yeah. You're right. <sighs> we agree you if that is something you can tell us about that is something we would like to hear the newly revealed uh fingers uh on the extra set of hands snap and a couple of serfs that beside Crowther seem even smaller like redu like reduced they kind of uh scuttle over um and produce a jar of um purple uh they're kind of a um they're kind of uh, a pair like you know they, they share a similar vibe to your bees but they're beetles that have little purple uh glyphs on them instead of the bees Ooh. and this jar is i don't know peanut butter jar size but there's got to be three dozen of them in it. and they're just scurrying all over Puts it, the hand, this fat little hand, presents uh, it to you. He let is them, let Sorry, them do God. their work. They'll seek it. They'll destroy it. But you have to let them work. You are proposing we allow foreign bodies into our form. Which there's no guarantee they themselves will get out or not do further damage. Another hand is reaches somewhere into the folds of this creature and pulls out a bag of silver and throws it to vantage. You can take the cash on hand, but you keep your tooth as well. At this point, Ochre, you can get a chance to um, you you can approach the the. Walk in, assess walk the situation. In. Yeah, I don't. You can decide how much of this you've heard. Um, so. But some, you, you definitely even from further away now see the, uh, the, the that he that they have eight eyes instead of um, just two. Um. Yeah, so I'll kind of, like, I'll be walking up and then slow down as he passes, like, he throws the bag of silver, and I'll say, um, this is the reward or uh, the threat? Oh, ochre. Gestures at Jar of Beetles. <laughs> Malafair has to make choice uh, about removing that. Ah, uh, the... Tooth. Hmm. Well, we are a vessel of the hive. Beetles do not belong. However, neither does a tooth. So keep in mind, I'm just going to give this to you as a resource um, that you can just trade away for something else if you want. Um, you don't have to use it right now, but that's what he's offering. Um, oh, I turned a, to. It would be a, a cursed resource. Nope, it's yeah, occult, I, it's an occult resource. Okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> but could it be a cursed occult resource? <laughs> it could be both, uh, but in this in this case, it is not. <laughs> it does have some tags, which I'll explain once you take it. But. Uh, <sighs> Oh, 
Vantage. So I did give Vantage uh, a bundle, uh, a, 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 a resource of D8 silver coins. So that's who not is a bad currently one. holding them, prepared to give them back. Well, no. He's oh, it's you, it's he's both. Paying you separate. Oh, all right, that works. Oh. Or you can think of it as a D4 for each uh, person or something. Wait, yeah, so was there a different cost to give me these beetles? Or is it as part of this deal? <laughs> it's part of the It's part of the okay, deal. Okay, okay, sorry. The way you said that, I was worried there was an additional cost. No, he's uh, he's paying you either coin okay, or so the beetles. He gave Vantage the money already. <sighs> Vantage. Vantage is getting the money regardless. Getting some money regardless. Getting some money regardless. <laughs> All right. Double, double That's the best you can hope for these days, is Vantage. getting some money regardless. Yeah, this situation is suitably beneficial to you? This is fine by me. Creature? I look down at the dog. This is suitable to you? <laughs> um... The, what does uh, the dog very dumb. <laughs> Um Dude, the GM. dumbest dog. <laughs> yeah. I do love how you insist on continuing to talk to it, but... Um, uh, Jewel has been kind of whimpering and looking back and forth uh, between Vantage and and Grouper. Oh. The other dogs have just been sitting like upright, at alert the whole time that you were here. Jewel's just Jewel's just the funny one. It's fine. Jewel, Jewel is Doug from Up. Oh no, Jewel! See, I as a human this person to me. <laughs> want to take Jewel with us, but I don't feel like that's a good idea. In I the don't game. feel like fighting. Uh, yeah. Caterpillar, Kingpin, job of the hut. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. I suppose that is suitable then. We appreciate your being reasonable. And I guess I'll just, like, slide the jar of beetles over and, like, scowl at it. I'm gonna kneel down to look at Jewel again. Be like, alright, Jewel. You go with Rubius Crawford. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna miss her. But you stay here. This is where you live. The, it's okay. um... He, the, Jewel looks up at you with really wet... Those really wet eyes. You're and... mean. <laughs> starts to, um, it, like, shakes their head a little bit, and one of the eyes, one of his eyes rolls, like, falls inside of his skull, and then sort of rolls out of his mouth into your hand. <gasps> cursed object! Cursed object! <laughs> well, if you're sure you don't need this, I will take this in memory of you. Um, another little nub like a rose like a little bloom of a flower sort of pokes up where the eye is like it's gonna grow like back. it's gonna have a normal eye it's again. just gonna bud another yeah. it's just it just sort of starts to like poke out and then just looks at you i'm gonna move to bonk heads oh okay and yeah. then be like all right now go to your pillow and uh after that, um, Jewel does return to the pillow and is just like beaming proudly and looking around uh, while the other dogs, you can see- All shake their, their little dog heads like, at him. One of the, the, eye, the eyes of the dog sitting right, of the, of the bone dog sitting right beside, just kind of roll back a little bit and then go <laughs> forward. They're so tired of the dog. <laughs> they didn't miss him at all. <laughs> um the <sighs> Crowfer says good then we have an accord all right well thank you for your time we'll be out of your hair one of his one of his arms just straightens out and points at ochre yes you hound um, you can call me Ochre. I prefer to refer to people as they're used to me. <laughs> Is my establishment 
worthy of your attention somehow? Um, I, I suppose so. I'm paying attention. Uh, oh, what? I, I get the sense you're about to make a request. Oh, oh no. We lost, we lost Ryan. We no. lost Ryan. Um, oh no. This is a, this is a good time. We can just take a break, maybe. Uh, we're okay. a little early, but we can do our 10-minute okay. break. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. See if we can get Ryan Sorry back. about that, folks, but we'll just we'll jump into. Oh. What? What? Spoke Eat? too soon. I'm back. Yay! Okay. You're back. All, we can wrap up. We can wrap up the scene with yeah. the VR we pictures can... in the wrong uh, in the pla wrong places briefly. Yeah, we okay. can. You remember who I am? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they say uh, he says there's no criminal activity happening here. I none that I've been made aware of. Don't you have several hounds that uh, that frequent this establishment already? I do, but they tend to indulge themselves almost immediately. I'm just concerned. The local constabulary, uh, sober, standing in my inn. I, uh, of course, don't want to be accused of any violations. I haven't noticed anything quite yet, but if it makes you feel better, I can, uh, I can move on more quickly. Um, a little fat little caterpillar finger. One uh, of his, like, baby hands? Yeah, just a little baby <laughs> oh, hand No, finger. don't say that! <laughs> they're baby proportioned, but they've been, they're blown up to bigger. It's worse than being tiny. They're like... Worse! It's like if a giant, he's, if they were a giant baby. Um, oh no! And they beckon you over, little sausage fingers. I'll, I'll, I'll step closer. The I'm eyes on Crowfer's head drift around. Um, they don't seem to keep any pattern uh, whatsoever, including the two that would be where normal eyes should be. They kind of just drift and swap around. Very hard to maintain eye contact with some someone like this. That might be on purpose. And he, he looks at you, and it's like he's reaching for something, like a bribe or something. Um, a, 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 there's a jingle of coin as one hand comes in. And then he looks closer and he says, uh, you don't wear it like the atheist does. We are kin as well, I see. You've heard it. The beat of the song. The pulses in my dreams, yes. Good. Law and a little disorder, I think, would be absolutely fine by me. Is there anything that you need from me? No. You're welcome here anytime. Ochre. Heart's blooded. And Ochre's just gonna kind of like look around a bit. It'll be good to have a place to lie low. You won't be advertising this, right? that we have a stand-up hound uh, patronizing our establishment? No. It's none of my business what goes on in the privacy of the rooms of the Crowfer Inn. Good. And as we are kin now, I think I should make sure that you have the finest treatment when you stay. that wouldn't go amiss and i'll make sure to like turn around and kind of like run my thumb over like the bone ridge of uh jewel for a second um before stepping back unless it looks like he's going to say something more uh 
every time anyone has touched the dog, every muscle on, on Ruby's Crepper is tensed. Um, it's like grubby fingers getting on his property, but uh, he 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 um, relaxes somewhat when you do it. Um, that's when you notice the missing eye and are kind of glad that the profile of Jewel is face, facing away. That profile of Jewel is facing away from him currently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will take a... There will be an expression where it's just, where it's just, just like, oh, taking a mental note of that. And then I'll be like, all right, well, I won't trouble you any... Uh, not for much longer, at least. And I will turn around and rejoin my friends. All right. Yay! I we think... did it! The thing we've been <laughs> we working it. on since the first episode! <laughs> the simple task Three episodes! Of, the simple task of returning a dog. Yeah. Listen, uh, I think maybe, uh, maybe now is a good time to take our break. And, that's uh, fair. Yeah, Listen, the I'm... heart is a complicated place. It is. <laughs> Isn't that true? Isn't that so true? The heart is a I didn't. Place. I didn't expect <laughs> to have to barter for cursed beetles in place of a cursed tooth, okay? Now like... you're playing, now you're playing hard. <laughs> Perfect. All right, y'all, we're going to take a quick 10. We're going to get up, do a stretch, uh, hydrate, and y'all should do the same. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We will be back here in a few, so see you soon. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, we are back from break. How y'all doing? Y'all take care out there. Don't forget to do, uh, do a stretch. At least even if you're just CD in your, if you're just in your seat a long time, don't forget to just check your posture, do a little stretch, do a little wiggle, move your shoulders around. Uh, don't forget to hydrate. In some places it's very hot right now. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> so always, always hydrate and do that. Um, we are back. Things are going very, very well for all of us. Definitely good. We're all... No one's exploded in the last five minutes that I'm aware of. So I think we're mostly good. Um, if, if you know, if you're enjoying the story overall, but you're like, mm, I need to shake things up a bit, don't forget, you can knock at the door and mess with us. It's, it always goes very well. You're like, not enough people have exploded in the last five minutes. Just saying, just throwing that out there. Um, and with that said, Jordan, I'll let you have it. I'll, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna zoom over a bit to uh, Roa and Montserrat to get um, a brief moment uh, with them at the bar while this conversation, um, while you're basically having the same time as your conversation with Uh Um. Montserrat uh, ordered a mead. It's this for you. It's this thick brownish red um, like molasses thick kind of drink uh, that gets poured into the into our glass, into a little mug very slowly. Um, and he, Montserrat says, I can't don't need to drink um but if you could describe how it feels um you know for uh, my records well taking a sip the first thing i notice is the scent the that hint of honey and wafting up my nose as i bring the drink closer to my face and then the first sip it's like it's almost like biting into a loaf of bread this is so thick and i can feel it coating my lips and my teeth and my tongue and i can and it tries to make its way down my throat it just needs a bit of coaxing but as it rests into my stomach i can feel a uh, almost a sense of warmth kind of blossoming from my center as I enjoy the drink and enjoy some company. The 
bookbinder's face. Uh, I keep trying to avoid saying Facebook. Um, I'm, so I'm just going to say their face flips another page um, thoughtfully almost and then says every one of those words was like a thousand. Thank you. Have you considered poetry? <laughs> uh, words and I have a complicated history. They reach into their robe and they pull out a blank journal and a pen, um, a quill and a little jar of ink. And um, they say, it's never too late to um, start a new craft. From me to you, Rowan. In your literary for the beginnings of your literary journal uh, journey uh, and uh, pushes the book uh, over towards you I think I give like a like a quick glance around the room trying like like trying to make sure that Myrna's not there ochre is shipping this ochre is shipping this hard. <laughs> I what does the book look like um it's very plain like it's, it's sort of bound in a brown leather um it has a little red um no green uh, a little green everything's red right now so a little green ribbon um you know bookmark kind of ribbon and um the quill is a long black uh like raven's feather that uh, you know very readily available in the city above um and uh yeah, and a small jar of ink. Mm -hmm. It's innocuous. Uh, anyone else would be looking at this being like, oh, this is a nice gift. Uh, you know? Roa, you, I, I imagine it's radiating. It's full of potential. It's like the forbidden fruit, almost. Roa reaches out and takes the book and just kind of like flips the pages so they can smell the scent of paper. There's nothing and... more in enjoyable than a blank page <laughs> to start on. Nothing more intimidating either. True enough. Your story, like... your story has to start somewhere. Yes. Roa takes the feather and just like, again, like touches just like the tactile, like feeling of the feather on their hands. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they take the, the vial of ink and give it a little tap just to hear the glass. And then they tuck it into their into the ropes like they're stealing something. I am excited to see what you put to paper, Roa. We will find out. Behind you and uh, I, I'm a Melifera Ochre in Vantage, I assume that you're kind of um, making your way across, then at, at the beginning, people were crowding out of the way for Rubius to get you, to get you to Rubius crowd for as quickly as possible. But oh, everyone is like the uh, the contents of the room have shifted to fill the volume better, and now there's lots of people around. Um, and so you're, I imagine you're kind of making ochre. You're trying to guide everyone to the exit, uh, but a fight breaks out. Um, some deal has gone bad. A table gets flipped. Um, two Incarnadine are yelling at each other. Their serfs are like growling and frothing and like getting ready to like jump and tear the other one apart. Um, everyone's got. Okay, so a gun. One of them pulls a gun. This is the important part. And. Um, you each have like one split second to react to what's going on here. Oof. Uh. <laughs> this is close quarters, too. Um, could I possibly try to. Oh, goodness. Um. I guess I would probably, like, my priority would be trying to push Melifera and Vantage out of the way. 
uh, if I if I thought it was anywhere close. You're yes. you're sort of preemptively uh, trying to get them behind cover or out as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. What I'll what I'll get you to do then is to give me a um a discern haven. A discern haven. To kind okay. of survey the situation quickly, and if you're successful on this, it'll give them. It'll give them mastery on their roles, presuming that the thing that you do um, applies to what they're doing. So if um, they're trying to escape or dive out of the way before things get real, go real bad, then you know, you'll have pointed out and, and guided them towards a safe spot. Okay, so I got a, I got a nine and a two. Okay, uh, so the nine. a nine is a success. Perfect. Um, you see um, that there are several, um, uh, like water barrels that are up near the front that have recently been brought in to replenish the, you know, the um, water for the inn, um, mm -hmm. and they will certainly take the brunt of any um, uh, explosive uh, problem um, if you get behind them, and so you can start heading towards there and. and I'll have like a guiding arm. Like I'm not trying to drag them with me, mm -hmm. but I'll be like trying to like gently sure. guide them towards that. Uh, just as a split second reaction. So, perfect. Um, so, Melfera and Vantage, you can choose to try and do something else, or you can just let what's unfolding happen um, and just get, roll an evade haven, um, an evade haven with, uh, with mastery. You won't roll mastery on other actions uh, because Ochre is just trying to, was just trying to set up a situation where you're safe and out of the way of the blast. Um, the presumed blast that's going to happen as soon as a gun is fired. So one of the incarnadines has the gun and is pointed, pointed at another in. incarnadine, a gun, I, incarnadine who has. Not really a good way to resolve that. Okay. There, who has two other incarnadines standing beside them uh, in blast range? Like the, the place is full, so. Mm, okay. Oh, I didn't. I didn't comprehend that you were saying there's about to be a chain reaction of explosions. This is a, this is a, poker, this is a poker game that has gone bad. Maybe it's not poker, but it's a, some kind of game is being played. And someone it's has gone bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, someone man. is losing ungracefully. Um, and a fuse is getting lit. <laughs> yeah, Can all of been... these people not be bombs already? What the hell? Illegal. God, <laughs> this is so... What? <laughs> Okay, uh, how far away is Roa from us? Vantage. We're gonna do a flashback with you quickly. Oh, okay. What a twist. Um, you're back at Bafflington and you're sitting at the bar. Um, and, uh, shoot. What's her name? Oh, it's actually on my shoot. I think. Yes. Imogen. Imogen. Imogen, um, it, when she's when she's not performing, she also kind of helps uh, behind the bar a bit. And she it's the end of the night, and she's put away, putting away a bunch of drinks. And she, uh, you had just broken up a real dangerous situation, and there's like blood all over your face, um, and you got in the way of like a fist fight, basically, that turned into a knife fight. Um, and Imogen, like, stops what she's doing and just, like, like, someone who looks up to you, uh, you know, when someone who looks up to you looks at you, they, she just crosses her arm and leans across the bar and I said, and says, you just went in swinging, you didn't even think about it. You stopped that from happening. We were going to have six bodies on, being buried in your graveyard tonight. You think you're tough, but you, when it counts, Advantage. I, something had to be done. I, yeah. But you six bodies is a lot. Two of Oker's hounds just sat and watched. I mean, any one of them could have got up to do something, but you were the one who did it. I'll talk to Oker about that. Tomorrow. It's what I like about you, Vantage. One of the handful of things I like. 
Heroes drink for free in my bar. And she pours another whiskey. She pours herself one and says, Here's to six bodies not in bags tonight. And she, like, holds up the whiskey. And here's to Vantage putting someone else first for once. She pours another another whiskey. And now we smash cut back to the bar, uh, the, uh, the inn. And uh, there is, <laughs> there, the fuse, time is frozen and the fuse is just like millimeters long. Um, and there is what Sam wants to do. And then there is the beats that Sam chose for this session. <laughs> So, I've set it up. I've turned the knife. Vantage, oh. What would you like to do? <laughs> oh, this hurts me so good. Good, good. Excellent. Good. You did good. Thank you. Um, I can. We can come back to you last if you want. Yeah, uh, come back to me. I'm gonna okay. just. Luxuriate in this awfulness. You're gonna stew in it, okay? Uh, Melifera, Roa. I mean, Ochre, Ochre gave me mastery to just evade. I think, right? Sure. Okay, so the only thing I'm trying to do is just avoid getting exploded. Like I don't think okay. there's anything much beyond that. Then you could if... do an evade haven with mastery. Okay, so that's still like just two dice. <laughs> you don't have evade or haven. No, I'm pretty sure I don't. Um. Okay. Nope, I have neither of those things. So thank you for the extra dice. Um, and now I roll. Uh, I got an eight. A two and an eight. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you follow Ochre's instincts. You're, you're, you two are wired together somewhat, uh, having been friends for a while, and um, get in behind the barrels um, before the inevitable uh, mess. Roa? The bookbinder, Montserrat, is... Um, is not really someone who seems to be aware of the surroundings unless they're focusing on them specifically. Um, and right now their focus is on talking to you. Uh, but you, your animal instinct, uh, which have been kicking in more and more lately, have got your the, the, the fur on your shoulders and arms are, are kind of uh, rising up and you, re you turn to see um, exactly what's going to happen. I think my first instinct is to get in between the where I think the blast is going to come from and put myself in between the blast and Montserrat. Beautiful. Uh, okay. So this is going to be more of an enduring of the blast. Yeah, that's... Okay. All right. Exactly. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, well, yeah, Roa, go ahead and roll, uh, Endure Haven. Okay. Um, yeah. No mastery, unfortunately, since you're not following Ochre's lead. I have an eight. Okay. And Vantage. I'm gonna go hide behind the barrels. Um... There's a split second where you think that you can get there faster than the bullet, and then you decide that it's not worth the risk. Yeah. And then, in a blink, you're behind. You're behind the barrels. So I'll get you to roll and evade uh, Haven with uh, with mastery. Because I don't have either of these things. I'm just rolling two dice. Good thingy. You got ochre around. Yeah. Uh, six? Okay. Um, you, Roa, you get in front of, uh, you get in front of, um, 
uh, Montserrat, who realizes what's going on as they turn to look into the thing. And then Montserrat grabs you and pulls you in behind the counter of the bar, um, which imprompts the barkeep to do the same uh, when they realize what, what's going on. Uh, glasses are smashed everywhere, you know, like mead drips down, but you pull down. Um, and all of this happens simultaneously as the gun gunshot goes off. Um, there is a series of sounds of fuses burning out effectively, and then um, kind of bone and flesh shifting until four or five incarnadine, it's hard to tell because they blend together, uh, detonate um, in the middle of this place. Um, Vantage, your, um, your hesitation, unfortunately, uh, reduces because it's a this is a much bigger explosion um it, it would normally have been taking d10 uh blood stress you're taking you're taking d8 blood stress instead um because of your partial success um so i'll roll that for you now okay five blood stress all right so i just took a thing when you mark stress add one to any protection values so for the for the end of this situation or the end of the session? Session. Okay, so, so temporarily that's... mark one blood blood protection, and so you're taking four blood stress instead. Okay. Protection reduces incoming stress by the amount of protection. And your stress isn't clear at the end of sessions. So it doesn't. No. Clear it. Okay. But right now, um, as some bone and silver shrapnel hit the back of your duster. I'm going to need you to roll your um, roll to test for fallout. And that's a, just a D10. A D12, a D12, D12 against your right. um, against your total stress. You want higher than your total stress. Okay, beat it. Really? I have a total of five, and I rolled a seven. Nice. Okay. Uh, it's, it's fun when stress accumulates, though. So yeah. That's good. that's good for me. <laughs> uh, you. Um, it, it amounts for now to nicks and cuts, uh, though uh, the the impact of the weight of everything hitting you also seems to br like bruise and, and, and bust up. Uh, but you get in behind the barrel just in time, um, as all the water drains out um, because bullet speed speed bone shrapnel has poked holes in the side of it and spills everywhere. Um, the Bookbinder peers over the edge and comes back, ducks back down and says, Roa, it seems as though your friends are departing. I I'm fine. Uh, I I'm making my way to the ramble, so perhaps we'll run across each other again, but uh, um, it's go. Go before her, any more chaos. Uh, and I... take, take notes for me of what you see, because, uh, because I won't be there. I I'll do my best. Uh... I know I'm sure you will. Go. And uh, yeah, Broa takes off with like, there's like one, you know, after a few steps, like a quick look back just to like see if they're looking. Um, it's hard to, they've turned to look back at, uh, at the scene unfolding, which is um, carnage and, and just a mess. And um, you can see that Rubius Crowfer, um, had some has some kind of magical barrier up that stops incarnadine flesh from coming through uh, and is completely unharmed. And he sort of just is chuckling and watching um, the petty squabbles uh, of the uh, the lesser incarnadine. Um, and uh, yeah, Ochre, you can see Ochre guiding San uh, Vantage and Melifera out from behind um, the, the the water barrels um, towards the door. Yeah, I'll just be like kind of directing them and then running out after them. Okay. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, you're back out into the red market. Um, the din, uh, the noise and the din and the chaos inside the inn continues behind you, but um, you can um, uh, you can see uh, Ochre, you can see. Uh, Cletus kind of uh, nod towards you and, and 
gesture his head over towards the um, towards the uh, ramble. Yeah, I'll I'll nod back and uh, look at everyone else. Is Roa out here as well? Uh, Roa we... rejoins you mom- yeah, momentarily after. All right. Um, I've had enough of this place for now, haven't you? Let's get. I think we might need to tail that hunter uh, Clifford that we met, and I've heard that he's gone into the ramble. Does that sound okay? We'll take the long way back to Bafflingdon. I mean, I... Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Ron. No, I trust you. So it's to the ramble then? Yeah. Uh, unless anyone else has some more business to wrap up want to get some supplies, make use of some beetles before we leave. As you are uh, presumably sort of on your on on foot heading towards um, the uh, you get farther away from the inn and there's more hustle and bustle, the normal kind of uh, red market chaos and um, too far away to communicate Milifera, you do see the Red Queen's apiarist who seems to be perusing their they're the equivalent of a couple blocks away, uh, but they look over toward they, they look over towards you as you spot them, and um, you can see them grin at you from from all that way, and a single white tooth gleams in their mouth, but then. But then you, you blink, you turn towards your friends to suggest perhaps following, and when you look, you, you can't see where they are anymore. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ochre's like, all right, we're all, let's all go. Melifera? Melifera? Angry buzzing noises. <laughs> yeah, all the bees are just like, zzz, like really angry. <laughs> Everything all right? <sighs> we saw the dreaded, the Red Queen's. Aperist, if you can call them that. They don't seem to be of the hive, and yet... No, that's fine. I would request we follow them, except they seem to have disappeared, so I suppose we can proceed onward. Um, yeah. <laughs> we were... <laughs> just all kind of just cut our heads and just <laughs> reactions. Yeah, there's like there's like nothing. Yeah, we we <sighs> we we have the beetles. We can keep them for a a moment when we all stop. Uh, if you believe we need to proceed to the ramble, then why don't we all proceed to the ramble? I have a favor that I need to uh, complete, so we'll find that hunter again and make sure he's not in any more hot water. Okay. Um, you make your way through the red market to a um, decidedly uh, uncharacteristically um, wild uh, kind of passageway that um, is uh, is narrow uh, much narrower even than the um, and overgrown than the sort of streets of, of, of uh, the streets of passageways of the red market um, vegetation uh, uh, vines and greenery sort of overgrow are, are, are blending with what's 
like blending with the carpeted floor and things of the of the red market it's all sort of the mark the the carpet leads down this passageway but then it's starting to like decay and and uh disintegrate from being you know weather worn and stuff and it's in fact raining um in this in this passage where it is not raining in red market Um, again you have gone down probably gone down the ramble uh ochre uh it's um it's wild it's wilderness there's creatures and things uh that wander through here hearts blood beasts and worse um and where it leads to is a different kind of uncomfortable the temple of sagacity is one of the temples of the moon beneath um which is the uh, god that the drow worship or a lot of people worship him here um and though the the main temple is considered a, one of the safest havens, um, and and the temple of uh, sagacity is not unsafe by any means, um, but you may. So imagine you're at imagine you are at a family reunion. Uh, I know this is not where you expect me to go at all. Imagine you're at a family reunion and the family has heard all about the things that you do but they don't understand it, right? This is coming from personal experience. So, for let's say you're at a family re- reunion and you, you make Dungeons and & Dragons and RPG products for a living, and you're at the family <laughs> reunion, and they've all heard that you make something, cards and board games and stuff, and they all want to know, um, and so they all start asking you inane questions that uh, they're never going to understand what you're telling them, but they keep just talking and having conversations and dragging you into new things that's what it's like being to you ogre anyway that's what the feeling is like at being there it's like a bunch of old people that just want to jordan talk are you okay <laughs> I <guess it's> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating i'm exaggerating for effect uh, obviously i enjoy talking about my work with my family and they're very proud of me i'm just trying to give you the idea of this babbling you know, one ant or two yeah yeah <laughs> So it's a non-stop discussion and debate uh, happening there. Ah, Roa would probably enjoy it. (laughs) Roa might. (laughs) Okay. Um, But you said it was called the Temple of Sagacity? Yes, it's a thane, the Temple of Sagacity. Okay. And uh, put it in the chat. So just to give you a little bit of idea where you're heading. It's on tier one. Um, you're on tier two right now of the heart, so it's it's going to be a little less chaotic uh, and safer. Um, okay, uh, but would we have the option of just going on the ramble or going to the ramble and then looping back past. to baffling? Yes, without. there there is a um, there is a delve on the other side. Um, okay, that okay, will get you through. You can, where are we right now? Uh, this hex, so we are here, yeah. here-ish, and we could go here to head back to Baffling Den. Yes. Okay. All right, Um. any pre-delve things that want to happen? Roa, do you want to do a pre-delve yeah, thing? W- yeah, I want to use my um, Crimson Mirror. All right. So roll discern plus a cult. So that'd be three d ten, correct? Uh, if you've got both of those, yes. Uh, yes. Got a nine. Nice. So you get to tell me three portents, or whatever it's they call it, portents. Um, three omens, I, I guess. Yeah. That, um, that uh, you see in your blood mirror, um, and I have to have them come true in some fashion for you. And when you interact with them, the obstacle or whatever this is, you roll with uh, you roll with um, mastery mastery towards them. Yeah. Um, but this is all up to you. And Let's see. The, I think the the uh, the uh, the um, ability suggests keeping it vague. Yes. Like very broad. I think one 
One thing I see is just a loose page fluttering on some kind of heart wind. Loose page on the heart wind. Got it. And um, I get a a flash of a mouth that is chomping at something but has no teeth. Now you're doing tooth stuff. Wait, you mean just like <laughs> like gums or something? Something like that. Okay. Creature gumming at someone? Is that <laughs> at something? Is that That's... a person? <laughs> Well, That's so distressing. If it, wants, if it wants a tooth, we have a tooth. <laughs> we, we just gotta find it. We got one tooth too many around here. And um, I see a bottle of whiskey that smashes against something. Like if it's been hurled or... Like it's been hurled, or something has pierced it, or something. Okay. I will do my best to incorporate these into the delve. Or, I mean, refer, re referrals to them. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, like our first delve, um, you're going to be taking, we're going to be coming across events and encounters and things, and successfully navigating them will progress. Um, the damage done to the resistance of of the delve. Um, uh, and once you have done stress to the delve equal to its resistance, you get to the other side. And and um, yes, uh, you start making your way. Um, you start making your way into the, uh, the ramble, and the first, uh, the first thing that you come across, um, the havens and different, different landmarks bleed together along the, along the delves, sharing, as you've seen, like, uh, the, the Red Queen's Way, you've seen, um, you know, the blending and baffling din and, and the markets of, of the red market. And though this stretch has a very, fairly normal forest kind of feel to it, um, you come across a river that seems to stretch forever in both directions that looks to be liquid gold. Um, you don't know if this is in interference from the Incarnadine or if it's, um, if it's just the strangeness of the heart. But this golden river, maybe 20 or 30 feet across, um, sort of drifts uh, drifts along. Periodically, uh, you do see small incarnadine boats that um, are being paddled by uh, serfs, um, but they don't pay any attention to you. Um, and standing at the river's edge is our old friend, uh, Spray. Okay. Um, well, I would like to hurriedly make my way over. I'm just kind of like calling out a little bit. Um, Mr. Spray, or, or, or Clifford, if you prefer. Uh, ah! Oh, good. You can carry me over. <laughs> um, that's not my purpose today, unfortunately. I'm... Also, I think you're a little uh, too um, well-muscled for me to bear your weight. You flatter me, uh, but uh, I, I'm really in a bit of a hurry. You have a solution to this? <laughs> um, uh... You could swim. Uh, I'm not sure that's so wise. He lifts up a stick that he's obviously poked, obviously poked into the river, and it's it has hardened hardened gold over the end over the. Uh, He wow. Throws it, he throws it and it just lands on the surface and just slowly sinks in. Is it one of those things where it, like it lands with more of a thud than a splash? Yeah. And 
We're like, oh yeah. This this not... lic the liquid is approaching Newtonian a little bit here. Um. Uh, well, I see there are some serps which are rowing their little boats. Perhaps you could hire one of them. I. I do have another concern that I would like to talk to you about before you cross any rivers. Oh, uh, uh, what could that be? And he shifts, um, and the satchel that he has makes some noise. <laughs> I, uh, it was brought to my attention that you might have been procuring things without payment, which is something that the denizens of Red Market frown upon. And may seek uh, some retribution for. Um, he says, that doesn't sound like something I would do, does it? That and does it? He reaches, he, he's reaching into the, into the, um, the, his bag as he's doing this, and uh, he holds out, he pulls something out, uh, and he, hand, he holds out his hand to you. I am going to like. Oh, well, what what's in his hand? He's holding it kind of like this, as though he wants to drop it into your hand. Deep sigh. Hold out my hand for it to drop. He puts it into your hand and he folds your hands close before you can see it. But you 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 feel like cold metal of some kind. And he says, maybe, maybe you didn't find me here. But you're right there. But maybe I'm not. I like turn the hand around and kind of like push him gently in the shoulder. Like, no, you're right here. Are you? Are you confused? Um. Open, open up your hand. Uh, my fist is still like this. I drop it. Uh <laughs> And he, he like reaches to grab it, and it's a um, it's a small golden figurine um, of one of the um, one of the bone dogs. Oh. And you did see the the various serfs run booths that sell merchandise with a different incarnadine, and uh, they often promote their imagery and things. So it's like a Funko Pop, but for. Yeah. It has more of a, like a, it looks more like something that would be buried in a pharaoh's tomb than something mm -hmm. you would buy at the comic shop, but sure. yeah, okay. that, that idea, yeah, they're a collectible figurine of your favorite Incarnadine and their bone pups. <laughs> so, um, and they're worth a lot, as you can imagine. It's a bribe, officer. Uh, clearly, you know, you're not the one of the squeaky clean ones. <laughs> uh, that's never been said of me before. Um, but I do owe someone a favor that I ought to be repaying. And some sort do of they, recompense for this. They provide is... you with a uh, itemized list of the things that were stolen? Um, that's true. They were vague on the exact amount. He sort of rifles through the bag and things kind of clank around. He pulls out um, some silvered rope uh, and um, a couple of other small tchotchke type things and says, I believe this was all that I took. I'll find another way across. I can uh, defend myself. I've got Marguerite after all, and he gestures at the rifle on his back. I really think you might be underestimating the number of forces that might that will be sent out to you. I think you might be underestimating Marguerite. <laughs> I um I kind of look at the little Borze Bor Borzoi bone dog figurine and I look at Vantage and I say do you want a keepsake? I feel like Vantage is just like 
do 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 Just holding a rifle. It's fine. We're we're all comfortable. This is where my arm goes. Uh, I mean, Oker, if you uh, if this is acceptable to you. Do you already have a keepsake? I might. Uh, I turn to I turn back to uh, Clifford and I say, I wouldn't say I'm squeaky clean, but this is an instance where I've I've really got to make some make some amends. I represent a lot more than myself these days. Uh, okay, make a make a compel wild to try and. Are you saying you want more return to you? No, I more like I'm not. I, I'm not. I can't take a bribe for this. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and what is the result? What is your what is your ideal situation? Is that he turns himself in? Is that... <laughs> I know it's a <laughs> it's kind of a wild shot. Um, but, Basically, at least something along the lines of like, I can't take a bribe. I, and I also can't lie about seeing you. So you've, you've got to come. Okay, I think we'll bring, uh, we'll bring in difficulty into this. Do you, do you have compel and wild, or you just have compel? I just have compel. Okay, so um, difficulty. There are two levels or three levels. There's normal, standard, which is what you've been rolling up until now. There's risky and dangerous. We're gonna make the difficulty risky, meaning you drop the highest result. Uh, on the die roll. Mm -hmm. So, instead of just rolling one die, it's more like rolling with disadvantage and to use a D A little term. bit, yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, if you're rolling three dice, you're still only dropping the, the highest. Uh, Fair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and if you had only one die in the situation and it was risky, you would roll it, but there's a separate chart that we look at. You only partially succeed on a 10, mm. and everything else is a fail. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, I rolled two eights. You are you all are so lucky. Uh, well, that's this hasn't always been the case, don't you? Yeah, know? yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, he wouldn't turn himself in, but uh, I just I keep finding myself in situations where the lack of cash on hand is causing me more trouble than it's worth. I just wanted some supplies. How about I keep the things that are going to keep me alive out here, and you can take everything back. No one's gonna miss the rope or the lantern. I look at like the large amount of silver embroidered through the rope. Okay, but very few people are going to miss the rope. Comparatively. Look into your heart. Please, um, I got I got kicked out of the lap of luxury. And got nothing. You're making your way to another one, right? I'm. I don't even know where I'm heading. Well, there's a there's a temple where perfect. Uh, I'll atone. I'll go to the temple and I'll atone. But just the rope and the lantern and and a couple of the silver coins, please. One silver coin. When I said a couple, I meant, like, you know, enough to get by. I... Fine. Okay. I better not be hearing about you again. I'm... I'm... will be a whisper on the wind. But, but quiet. Alright, I, I, I roll my eyes and say, alright... Hand me, uh, hand me the excess. So I'll, I'll return those. He um, hangs the lantern on his belt uh, and puts the rope around his shoulders and just gives you the, the whole bundle. Um, all right. Yeah. The Can back of my thing? shoes kind of sink into the mud a little with all the <laughs> <laughs> stuff. What were you saying, Jess? I, I was going to ask if I could do a thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Melifera 
goes over to Roa. <laughs> and just, um... <laughs> tries to tell a joke. <laughs> Those sound like that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly what's happening here, clearly. Um, and it's just like, would, would you mind just watching our body for a moment? Uh, Thank you! And I'm gonna... The bees are gonna exit out and my body's gonna <laughs> flop to the floor. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it more like a flop or do you just stop... Perf- you like stop yeah, I guess, I guess it's more like... It's almost like stiffen. Yeah. Maybe oh, no. you were like, I just need one moment and then the bees empty out and your finger is just up like this. And you're just <laughs> a wax, wax mannequin. There's, there's a few plate like... Because um, they have like just literally like beehives coming out of their shoulders and things like that, so the bees kind of exit out. I mean, we do also have what, what did we call them? The ear launch, the ear landing pads. What, what? Ear port. Oh yeah. <laughs> ear port. Ear port. Ear port security. Yeah. Ear port security. Yeah. So so. <laughs> You see some tiny bees like waving little like flashers, <laughs> like go go go. That's so just their wings reflecting the light, like moving around. Yeah. Yep. So um, I want to use while while Ochre is um, talking to Clifford, and Clifford is claiming to to give everything up. I want to use my many eyes um, and send my bees over to go spy on him to go see if he's hiding anything on his person, like if he's got anything. Like they can like sneak inside. They. He handed over the whole bag, right? So that's not on him anymore, right? Mm-hmm. So, because I was going to send them to check the bag, but no, I think they'll just, like, check his person. Like, is he okay. wearing a big duster or something like that? I'm imagining. Um, you know the hunter from Jum- the hunter from Yeah, Jumanji? that's 100% what I was imagining. Yeah, the hunter from Jumanji. <laughs> but, but with, with, uh, with uh, monochrome uh, skin and uh, pointy drow ears. Um, but yeah. That's what he. This is what he looks like. Yeah. Uh, okay, give me a, a discern wild. Okay, that's that's all I'm doing. Nothing, nothing odd. Just send it over. You, you know what's like in the comedy trope where everyone's like, just act normal, and for Melifera, it's just like <laughs> freezing completely yeah. and going like 100% dead behind yeah. the eyes. <laughs> As you do. Like people painting eyes onto sunglasses in class so that they look like they're awake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is an Weekend interesting conversation, and we are happy to be here. And then you just freeze, and the bees all leave and go do other things. <laughs> well, someone talks at you. I could do that in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, our body is a temple. Two bees Four stay bees. behind <laughs> to do blinks. The two bees <laughs> stay behind to do blinks to make it look like you're listening. And head yep, nods. Yep, one yep, of them does yep. like your chest <laughs> movement, but like out of sync because there's only one person struggling at the, one bee struggling at the bellows. Yeah, exactly. Skeleton. It's like Bruce, hardly tough. moving because the bee's just like. <laughs> <laughs> most we most of our organs are gone, actually. So. It's mostly bees in there. It's mostly just bees and beeswax. <laughs> anyway, bees all the way down. It's yeah, it's bees top to bottom. It's uh okay. yeah. Anyway, sorry, I got a three and an eight. Okay. That's all. Um, he has tucked something. Uh, he has tucked something um, in, into the back of his um, belt. Um, underneath, it's got a glimmer of gold. It's obviously it didn't belong to him before. Um, it has uh, the curved shape shape of a of a little boat. Hmm. Oh my god, all the bees are behind him so that he can't see, but Ochre, you just form, see the bees make like an a... arrow! <laughs> right? They it do just the kind of like, starts pulsing, like, so they're like blinking. Yeah, they do, yeah, they do that thing if you've ever seen, like, when bees kind of like, go to spook off other, like, predators and stuff like that, where they kind of like, line up and then they all flash their wings in a, in a way that kind of makes it like, Almost like it's not lit, lit up, but you, it, there's movement. It looks down. like it's blinking. And it looks like, like a bigger yeah. creature. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They do it. Um. So I'm kind of like struggling with the weight of this satchel. <laughs> I'm like, 
are you sure this is everything? Like, really sure. I am just a humble wanderer of the wilderness. I, I've kept the rope and the lantern and the single silver coin, and I'm going to be fine. And that's everything. I, that's the. Those are the only things you're keeping. Those are the only things I'm keeping. Nothing else you might have forgotten or slipped your mind. I don't know what you're getting at, but I don't appreciate the insinuation. Uh, I go and point back. Uh, did you say it was a pocket that that? It was just did? tucked into the into the the pants, uh, like the back. Of his like pants. the back of his waistband. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Uh, so, I know you checked your satchel. Did you check everywhere? I think we're done here. I, I've given you literally everything except for the basics that I need. So, toggle um, on. Perhaps we should check again. Just, just to be sure. Okay, uh, I need you to make a... Um, are you, are you, so he's reaching for something, but it doesn't look like he's, he's reaching behind himself. Um, uh -huh. but you're not sure if he's going for the rifle or the boat or whatever, and you don't actually know what it is. Right. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say I'll need a hunt wild roll from you. Okay. Help. By being um, intimidating. You have hunt. I do have hunt. Uh, sure. If you wanna, if you want to escalate and pull the gun or something, pull a gun on him. I rifles through his point. Rifle versus rifle. Right um, I I think pulling the gun on him when he's reaching for something that could be the rifle, or could be rifling, is is called for. Okay. All right. So just roll. Right. I uh, know you. You're helping. You're just gonna provide yes. ochre with an extra yeah. die. Yeah. Cool. Um. So uh, a hunt wild to kind of grab him before anything happens is basically uh, what's yeah. happening here. Okay. Whoa. Uh. I wrote. I rolled an eight, six, and a three. So eight. Eight. Okay. You grab his arm before he's able to swing whatever he grabbed onto around and the, the boat um, the little golden boat uh, like a rowboat falls and rolls towards the uh, down the bank and lands in the gold uh, golden river and immediately just um, it's as though it's it looks like it's sinking and it's starting to fill but it's actually using the golden river to build make itself bigger and suddenly there is a big golden rowboat uh, at the at the end of the river and he says <laughs> could I get a lift <laughs> oh my goodness is this how parents feel <laughs> uh I imagine yeah <laughs> Uh, so Ochre just thinks something along the lines of, I miss the pups a lot. And then... Uh, <laughs> Those pups always cut to the chase. <laughs> um, I can escort you across the river, and then I'll have to take this back. Of course. Uh, that's That was my intention as well. I really should have been more... I wanted to surprise you. You looked like you were troubled by not being able to get across, and I was going to, you know, I was going to... It's fine. You can keep it. All right. Okay, boat boy. Let's, uh, let's see boat. you across. Boat boy. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> rowing. Uh, so I'll get you to roll a d4 um, on your... Uh, for to add to the delve, uh, okay. because you're you were the one who made the roll there and was and were successful, and that will say is getting you across this river. So okay. you do have your new shoes, uh, your delve D6 shoes. I do. Um, uh, the uh, the the delve heels, delving heels. Our practical delving heels. Yes. Practical delving heels. Yeah. They're not that practical. They're and they do have a they do. 
they would let you roll a d6 if they apply to the situation, right? But um, probably not in this instance. No. Maybe you could have tried to walk across uh, with them, I, and they might have helped, uh, but, but uh, that's something for another time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but for now, the default is d4, so give me a d4 roll to see how much you do to okay. the... Uh, that is a four. Oh, wow, okay. Um, you do kind of muscle, uh, this, uh, gentleman thief into rowing, um, and you make your way across to the other side. Um, it's slow, because it's hard to move through this very thick gold, um, and little flecks splash in, um, and when they hit your clothing and things, they kind of just solidify and, you know, mm-hmm. the part of you that's above the edge of the, the edge of the boat, uh, gets get a little flecked with gold as they, as you go by. Um, I dig but, this. Yeah. It's not too bad. And you bump, there's a, a gentle bump as you hit the other side. Um, and you pull this thing up and as soon as it's completely out of the liquid, mm-hmm. it shrinks down to its, uh, normal size. Okay. Thanks for the lift. Let's never see each other again, okay? That that's would be preferred. In fact, he puts his hand out to shake on that. Yeah, I'll shake on that. To never seeing each other ever again, goodbye. Hmm, goodbye, Clifford Spray. Um, and he, uh starts to head towards the, uh, sort of the wilderness on either side of the path over here, and to, to explain, it's basically like you've gone through this tunnel and now it's just woods um, that just go for as far as you can see, impossibly. Um, and the rain is still it's still raining. And uh, he leaps up and basically like pulls himself up into a tree and suddenly all of his camouflage and everything kicks in and he's gone. That was a lot faster than I imagined, but all right. <laughs> wow. He understands some kind of contracts, at least. Okay, um, so out of character, how do I return these things? Do we have to head back to the Red Market first, or can I find an Acarnadine along the way? You can hang on to it for now, and and we'll figure out. Um, What I'm going to say is, to represent it, is a... um, we're going to make it a D12 since it's a ton of stuff. That's the biggest that resources can get. Also, this makes it a bit of a temptation if you decide that you just want to trade it in or mm-hmm. something. Um, I'm going to say it's D12 Haven, uh, but I'm going to give it... Um, uh, sorry, I'm just getting you a token. But I'm going to give it two tags. So this is um, Red Market Trotsky's. I don't know how to spell that, so I'm probably going to get that wrong. There's a lot. There's a lot of T's in there. Of more than you'd yeah, expect. Yeah. It's, it's such a I long got, word the first time I, I actually read it. I think I got it. it pretty close. T-C-H-O-T-C-H-K-E-S. Chotchkeys. Anyway. Eh, close enough. Yeah. And uh, it has two tags on it. It's going to have the awkward tag, um, meaning that it's kind of difficult to haul around. And it's going to have... The um, beacon. Oh, okay. so other things are attracted it, to it, it right? It, it, it's a shiny bag of treasure that uh, is impo- in, a, in, a, in a satchel that you can't close. Um, and so it jingles like coins and, and shines. It's very like- awkward to carry, so I'll be very noticeably carrying yeah. it. Now, tags on resources don't have any mechanical effects themselves necessarily. But these are, if you ever fail a roll again, which apparently won't happen, I can use these to kind of influence the fallout. Um, you know, if you get some uh, fallout that says something shows up that's been following you, it could be very well be a bunch of thieves trying to come for this bag of uh, loot. Um, but uh, for now, and like, if you need to lose an item, an awkward item makes sense that you drop it and spill it or something. You know what I mean? Anyway. These are, that's what those tags uh, infer. And I guess I will mention also um, to uh, uh, Malifera, you have a new DA to cult 
uh, resource, the Seeker Beetle. Yeah, I, I saw that. I, it I has literally... mobile, fragile, and harmful. Um, oh, fun. fragile! Oh. Fragile is because it's in a glass jar. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm, there's a good chance mm -hmm. that if you're not careful, it, it could get damaged. Um, mobile is because it's a living thing. It's a bunch of beetles. Uh, that mm -hmm. won't matter too much until the glass is gone, and then they might start wandering. Um, and then harmful means uh -huh. that they have the potential to do harm. Uh, you know, but Melifera may not know Great. this, uh, having looked closely. And they're in the jar. As long as they're in the jar, it's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. So we cool. just have to get the whole jar into your head somehow. But they have to be out of their jar to do their work, <laughs> right? Like, that's the problem. Hmm? You just need well, a funnel. See, I took Put leashes on them. Mm. <laughs> and we could just yank them on out. Oh, so the bees can just hold the leashes for the beetles. <laughs> Take yeah. the beetles for walkies. There's like a half a dozen bees to each beetle, like just to like yeah, stay just, with like, them. Yeah, they're to get them going in only the specific directions they're allowed to go in. Yeah, yeah they're like nah, nah. Each of them has has guard bees. Yeah. No, this is, uh, this is why. Yes, I took it so we could decide at a better time how to handle this. Suddenly, as you move across, as you start moving forward, who, uh, someone's picked up the boat, I presume. A little boat thing. Yeah, okay. probably. I, yeah, I guess I'll take it. It makes sense for me to have it. Yeah. So, um, it acts, I'll give you some, uh, it's, it's an item, I'll give you some details for it, but it's another delve, very, like, situational delve item, but, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, up ahead, uh, you start hearing cries for help. Um, a very a voice that is that sounds like almost sing songy sing songy but in distress saying um help me help me they've turned on me can can we can we all just ignore this one is it <laughs> but <sighs> we've all been out so long um can as I just I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Okay. I was. Just, let's just let's just take a look. We'll be quiet, right. so we can just leave. If I don't think it's a good right. idea. If it's if it's not worth our time, we'll all leave. Right? I look at everyone. Right? Up ahead, up ahead um, you see a, a mouth, the mouth of a cave. Um, this rocky outcropping, uh, and there's a cave um, with these purple crystals uh, that seem to be growing all along uh, along the mouth of it. Um, and the figures up ahead seem to be, there's a group of six or seven of the uh, figures that seem to be going after an Incarnadine uh, that has been uh, stranded here. They're, they're using one of the wooden poles from their palanquin to try and keep what, as you get closer, appear to be their serfs at bay. Um, and the surf, the serfs have all, um, as, as you get closer still, you realize that their bodies are distended um, and their nails seem to, their fingers seem to have grown into sharp bony points. And um, out of the red of the robe, you can see that the purple crystal from the cave as is, is like bursting through their flesh and growing all over them. Um, and uh, the um, incarnadine, one of the one of the creature, one of the surf creatures, turns to look, and uh, the incarnadine uses that op that opportunity to jab at it with the stick, and another one reaches onto it and just snaps it in like breaks the stick in half um, and is enclosing enclosing on him. It's it's not that one. This is a new incarnate. Just checking. Um, this is a you know, we'll say it's a knoll. We haven't had a knoll in a while. And uh, they have um, their face is just bristling with piercings of different each one a different material 
different metals and gems and things that have been honed, honed down. And they, uh, their robes are particularly ostentatious, and the serf's robes are particularly um, cheap. I think we might be uh, witnessing a union emerging. How do we, how do we, we as a group feel about unions, I guess? <laughs> I mean, it also looks like evil crystals, blah, 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 but it also could, it could, <laughs> could be a nursery. Elfara, um. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, um, sorry, I was gonna ask to look. Um, I was trying to see if my perfect machine or anything like that worked for this, but I don't think anything does. Um, because I think I think our first thought was also like, oh, good, a union uprising will leave them to die. But but then when you mentioned, you know, the crystals and stuff shooting out of them, that sounds like they're unwell. And at the, at the mouth, as you kind of survey Melifer, at the mouth of the cave. You see that there are a couple of the serfs are just like um, uh, joyously kind of splintering the crystal off into pieces and like feeding it to each other. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. these things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is yeah. evidence see, that. See, this sounds too cordycepsy to me yet again. <laughs> Remember, we were having this discussion about. There uh, is evidence around here as well that this passing is difficult. But there are a few wagons and carts and um, bones to be seen here of people who have not survived passing this cave. Um, so there's an opportunity here to, to mechanically to solve a connection by trying to figure out what this problem is and making this passageway safer for people. Um, and you think it might have something to do with these crystals. It's also po possible that there could be cursed resources uh, to be found here, which one of you wanted to gather, so. Uh, Milifera sighs really yep. heavy. Ugh. <laughs> it is just like, we know we said we should not get involved, and were this simply a social problem we would continue to believe so but this seems to be some sort of mind control slash infestation event and we would rather not allow such things to exist and don't you just want to find out what that crystal is we do not <laughs> we believe it controls <laughs> but perhaps if if it only if it can be done safely and I need to get a closer look in case I need to take notes about this later on. Oh. I feel like everyone just stopped and looked <laughs> at <Roa. laughs> a, a Mental notes, of course. With this more uh, two two more of the um of the transformed surfs start to uh, pay attention pay attention to you. And they start stalking towards you. Right. You can hear them chanting under their breaths as they get closer, and they're saying, No gods, no masters, no gods, no masters, over and over. Sure, we have to kill them. They seem to have the right of it. But they're getting closer, and they, they keep <laughs> getting closer, and the crystals keep growing on them, and each crystal, you realize, is pushing a silver coin out of their flesh. The coins inside them are being rejected um, and replaced with this um, very seemingly potent, uh, potent material. Okay, yeah, I'm about the point where I'm ready to drop my large satchel and pull out my rifle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Doesn't look like we have much of a choice. Okay. Let's do some fightings. They're not on you yet, so you can make attacks or do something if you want, but, uh... Uh... Um... 
Can I find a place out of sight? Like, I want to, like, hide. Sneak up. Yeah, hide and just kind of, um, like, either set up an ambush or just. Uh, a sneak wild is what I would need from you to. Okay. Eight. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, lots of bush, uh, lots of um, um, out rocky outcroppings and stuff around the cape. So you can um, prowl off uh, fairly easily uh, without anyone um, anyone noticing. And uh, okay, basically everyone can take one action right now. Um, um, I would like to try using the stare down uh, ability that I have. Oh yeah, the, the hound stare. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I do have the legendary. The, um, I don't know what you would call it, like ability or advance the, for the, this. The upgrade or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that it would work it, with uh, hearts blooded. It works on things that it shouldn't work on. Yeah. Okay. It means it means like you can, in, in theory, like stare down a piece of furniture. Like it doesn't I could matter. Stare to, try to stare down that river of gold into letting us pass. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that's, that's how legend. That's how legendary the hounds stare down is. Is that you get a chance even ha if it's impossible. Uh, okay. Um, what is is this an attack? Uh, it says your gaze functions as a weapon, so a kill D six ranged. Okay. Uh, so I will need a kill. Uh, if you're attacking these folks directly, uh, kill wild or kill cursed. Okay, I have neither of those, so it's just going to be a single D10. Okay. Oh gosh, that's a 10. I could take a picture of it if you don't believe No, me. I believe you. There's the, None of you seem like you would cheat at a role-playing game. That's excellent. So you actually, your stare is incredibly potent with a critical like that. So the D6 becomes a D8, and now you can roll that much um, uh, stress against the um, encroaching, cursed um, fella. Uh, that's a seven. Nice. Um, so your penitent gaze, um, chastising and also, there's that disappointment, you know, uh, not mad, just disappointed gaze of the hound. Um, the 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 three of, or I Roa, you're watching from wherever you're hitting, I presume. Um, you see almost like a ripple of energy. Um, I I don't watch anime, but I'm imagining an anime kind of vibe, where ochres uh, finally um, uh, like made up beautiful face kind of goes into a stern gaze and the um the surf that it hits uh just starts to like weep uncontrollably um and and prostrate itself on the ground and uh and uh fall dead it's up to you what you want to, how you want this to happen Te so technically they've got a resistance well, not technically. They've got a resistance, and when you reduce it to zero, they do whatever you were trying to get them to do. So, if it was kill them, then they could be dead. But it could be subdue. It could be. I think it's um, more of like a subdue sort of situation. Just sure. like stop advancing, stop being a threat. Yeah, it doesn't seem to influence anybody else, but it definitely uh, is like taking itself out by just like groveling almost uh, at your gaze. Okay probably took more time than firing a rifle though <laughs> but you don't need to reload the eye your eyeballs that is a you know scary what they thought. always say <laughs> you don't need well, to reload your eyeballs we did just meet a dog that can reload its eyeballs yeah but so, it doesn't need to so uh, it's a possibility in this setting definitely <laughs> sure okay we get well you sometimes have to reload your eyeballs like the old saying says um <laughs> Vantage, you wanted, did you want to get a shot off? Is that yeah, nice? I want to get a shot off. Uh, I figured that's the thing to do. Oh, shoot. I had other music planned for this. Oh, sorry. I meant to ask <laughs> when okay. we left the market. Okay, should be a little more wildernessy. Things. 
just to be sure. Okay, that's it. <gasps> cool. There we go. So I'm rolling. What What are you using to well, the I... the rifle? Okay. Um, so you are working with a, a hunting rifle. It's got yes. extreme range and the reload tag. Dang, okay. extreme range. Yeah. So basically there is like right near you, range and extreme range, and it's just eyeballing what that is. And right now they're at range-ish. Uh, <laughs> and I'd like to take the shot and then start walking backwards, you know, as you do. <laughs> Yeah, instead of walking forward and firing the rifle over, you're firing it and backing up. You know, backing up, going to reload it. <laughs> sure. It's going to be that easy. Uh, okay. Yeah, of course. So, uh, it is a kill, um, a kill cursed or kill wild. Do I have cursed? No, I don't. Okay, but I have kill. So that's the one to start with and the one for my skill. That's right. And okay. some some creatures have um, some creatures have a difficulty. Uh, bigger creatures or more dangerous creatures. In this case, they are a standard difficulty, uh, so you're not losing any dice. I rolled a, a ten. <laughs> it's like the same die, and I'm getting really nervous. Uh, okay, so your d6 becomes a d8 with the with the rifle. Um, go ahead and roll that. Oh, I don't have a d8 out. Can I have someone roll it for you? Are you grabbing one? Yeah. Keep these on hand. No. Just yeah, afraid of accidentally rolling a d8 instead of a d10 at some point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now that you're saying that, I'm literally like, oh, there we go. That's <laughs> okay. an eight. <laughs> you rolled an eight? Yeah. What is it? Okay. Yeah, bam. Okay. Uh, one of these creatures is about to just dive at you, and you just <laughs> one blast, and they just spiral backwards. Uh, crystal and coins kind of scattering everywhere, and they just skid to a lifeless stop somewhere further up in the in the ramble. I'm just imagining Vantage with this like this incredible calm, like takes a moment to blow the hair out of their face, just like Yeah. And then yeah. fires. Yeah, lines up the sight and just Yeah, and then yeah. starts backing up to reload, right? We're gonna do this again. Uh yeah. Just cool as a cucumber. And, yeah. Advantage. You see uh you see your the bullet leaves your gun and your um your shadow, also your death, kind of spirals with it, and it seems to pluck something out of the out of the dead thing as as it goes. And it's done this before, where it just kind of collects a little piece. It, it, it likes it's your death. It likes deaths. It's collecting other little bits and pieces of is other it, people's deaths. Is it like collecting trophies or or? Only uh, Vantage will know, and only Vantage sees this. But yeah, oh, okay. I think that's. But I think in a, yeah, outside of the, uh, to the players, yeah, I think it's that's sort of the idea. It can't collect a whole death, but it's, it collects. It's a matter of time for it gives it a good try. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like a Costco sample. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, now I'm just imagining like <laughs> sorry. someone's death going to be like. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to have a little death just as a treat. Um, <laughs> oh no, I like this vintage better. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Which means they died in a vineyard. Uh, if it's if it has. Yeah, been. obviously. <laughs> um, so, uh, Melifera, is there something you would like to do? Um, we mm -hmm. would like <laughs> be be. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, I think our, our hive really, really, um, doesn't like the concept of, of, um, corruption, infestation, that sort of stuff. It's extremely bad for a hive. Um, and so I think they actually naturally kind of, like, take off and go to attack whichever one is closest. Um, and they are going to swarm, as they do. Um, Which is yeah. a Please release the swarm, send right. out a swarm of bees, and they are eager to defend you. And it has the tags ranged, which of course makes sense. But it mm -hmm. also has the tag spread, meaning it will um, it will hit. It does. Look, it's a D four, um, but it will hit multiple people, which is handy. Oh, that's what it. 
That's what it means. Like shotgun blast bees. It just goes out and it, <laughs> it gets a bunch of people. Like a dog with bees in their mouth and then they bark, they shoot you them could, out. <laughs> you could have had that if you stole that dog, but you didn't. Dang it, no. Bee bork. Bee borks. Okay. So okay. I'll need a kill, a kill cursed or kill wild from you. Uh, kill cursed or kill wild. Um... And uh, for behind the curtain, I'm getting these. I'm using the uh, the domain that is attached to the type of creature. So that's. Oh, okay. If you're hunting an animal, it'll be wild. If you're hunting a regular person, it's a haven, and these people are cursed. I have a none of those things. So okay. you know, they're mostly they're mostly just eager to protect me. So maybe they don't... Hey, that's a... That's not good. Uh, it's a six. Oh, good. Um, okay, so you there can you roll, your, roll your... Roll your stress, your d4, and I'll apply it to, I'm gonna say, three... Um, three of the uh, creatures get hit. Bro, oh, that hit? Yeah, a six of seven is a partial success. Oh. You're gonna take some stress. Oh, cool. I, uh, I rolled a one, so... Don't worry, I, I'm rolling bad. Don't worry. Don't worry. One, feel, one of us will still roll bad. It, it'll be our turn next. Don't worry. I feel much, <laughs> it's happening. I, I'm very I feel nervous. Much better. Sure. Um, the bees swarm a bunch of these serfs and they are just like biting or, or stinging and, and tearing at them, um, burrowing into ears and trying to just uh, go <laughs> after these. Um, they're, they're looking for their, their ear ports. Yeah. Uh, okay. What do I want to do stress wise? I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Please tell me. I want to. I want to hear all about how I'm stressed. Uh, you're going to take. Uh huh. Sorry. That's okay. I still have mind stress left over because we haven't stopped and rested yet. If we stopped and That's rested, right. I could get rid of it, but yeah. we haven't. Uh, you're gonna get. Uh, you're gonna get D four. E for Echo. Fortunes. Supplies. Fortune. My supplies fortune. of bees are stressed. No, it's gonna be fortune stress. Okay. Uh do I roll it or do you roll it? I'm rolling it for you. Okay. You let me know you let me know. It's two fortune stress. Cool. And two I'll fortune. need you to roll your D twelve. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna put it in Echo. Yeah. In the blood, you move through the heart as if blessed. Uh, once per situation, when you take stress to any resistance other than echo, you can allocate it to echo. Okay. Uh, you have echo resistance. And I one. have echo protection, so... So, so you take pick. only one echo stress. Uno stresso, por favor. Thank you. Um, you can sense the bees, and as they're climbing around on these things, every time they touch the crystal, <gasps> um their glyph shorts out like a like a <laughs> piece of electronic it's gone like it's had water dropped on it or something like that and some bees fall uh in the in the fight uh can you roll can you yeah, roll your d d12 against your uh, stress yeah, yeah 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 we uh, we no, shudder no, yeah 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 me we shudder and we we tell the others I might um, finally be able to give some fallout, so. Do not You've been touch. Itching. <laughs> yeah. Bad, thing, we... bad things happening is fun. I rolled a nine. That's why you GM harsh. How, <laughs> <laughs> how uh, many, how much stress do you have? Uh, how many stress do I have total? Yeah. Uh, seven. Actually, when was that, when did you get that mind stress? Uh, I don't know, was it last session or the session before that? It was something to do with the teeth, I think. Then it was last session. You clear all the mind stress after a situation, and that's how your bee mind works, or whatever. Oh, I thought I had to like rest. No, you can't actually get rid of it normal ways. You just get, you just get rid of it at the end of every situation. Um, yeah, my bot, my body, my bees. So you can clear out all the mind stress, and, and I guess yep. no, no fallout happens to you. Beginning of each situation, clear your mind stress of impeding madness flows out from you and into the. <laughs> Huh, just sure. shake it off, would get back to gotten, being like... Would you have gotten fallout? Mm-mm. Okay. It doesn't matter anyway, but clear out the mind. You keep that echo stress, and uh, yeah, something, something's interfering with the bees. 
Yes, we we communicate it. We 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 deeply shudder at the feeling of losing some of our bees and 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 experiencing that lo them losing their glyphs. Um and and it's it's exactly as we feared. The 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 crystal is do not touch the crystal. Ro Roa, uh we're going to finish with one more little action from you potentially since you did like a sneak. Um and uh a few more creatures, not serfs, something else start coming out of the caves. Um, only you kind of see it, but it, other people who have been affected by this situation. And um, you, you are not a fighter by nature, right? Oh, you are a... Not typically, no. But you do know, um, much like classic monsters of, of literature, that there is some there is a way that you can become better at fighting. Um, yes. And help your friends in this situation. Uh, but it means turning over to something that you don't necessarily want to do. It's why I've taken off to uh, do this privately. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say that uh, Myrna's face flashes before you, it, through your memory mm. and the look of like not just rage but just disappointment that you fell so easily into the hands of books into the hands of the written word and it's up to you yeah um, I think um, at this point it's not so much it's I'm constantly holding back my true form and I just start to kind of give in to it. Like just letting go of like all of my conviction. Like this is a sign that I not only did I read this book and get this disease, but it resulted in like losing friends, losing my place outside of heart. And this is going through my mind as my limbs start to shift and bones snap and reform in new shapes, as my face gets longer and where like my teeth like, fall out and are replaced with fangs. I kind of hunch over and take a position on all fours as it's like this kind of like ghastly fur kind of starts erupting from my skin and it's just like this my my screams start to turn into snarls as there's just this like this strangely sticky saliva dripping from my snout and Getting... for ochre vantage and melifera this is you realize that there are more creatures climbing clambering out of the uh the cave but then another monster leaps forth from the wilderness, snarling and um, bestial. And that's where we're going to leave our game, our session for this, uh, for this evening. Afternoon? Five o'clock is evening. I don't know. Time is irrelevant. Time zones. <laughs> there you go. What even? Session three of heart. Oh, so Great! Hard. Cool, 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 cool. Oh so my cool. goodness. So good. Thanks. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's so good. I love it. it's, it's so, so good. good. It's just so... Ah! <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be able to twist all of these knives and have all these things happen if you hadn't made all very interesting characters, so you're just as to blame. You're just <laughs> as to blame for all of this. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh no, we're the victims of this, obviously. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm having a grand time, so yeah. that's what I'm, that's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, that was awesome. Uh, thank you for this wonderful session. Let's go around uh, and see if everyone's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who you are, where we can find you, what cool stuff you're up to, and. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess that's it. What what your what your favorite tooth moment was? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're gonna start with uh, we're gonna go in reverse order. So we'll start with Jordan. Uh, I'm Jordan. I'm the awful man behind this uh, heart campaign every other Saturday um, here on um, on Justice Channel. Uh, you can catch me occasionally on Friday nights, uh, either facilitating fiasco or uh, playing an indie game when I get a another indie game when I get a chance. Um, the uh, important news in my life is that my work, uh, Hip One Press slash The Decameni, has a new Kickstarter launching on Tuesday. It's called Hecta. It's a it's a semi comical semi semi horror uh, carnival clown carnival setting for uh, for D and D. Um, it's one of my nightmares made flesh, uh, Ryan, so I can relate to you in that. Uh, um, but I also, I'm doing some writing for it and, and kind of guiding it a little bit. And uh, uh, I'm actually really excited. It's, it's, it's really 80s schlock horror kind of inspired. There are cool teenage vampires with leather jackets in it. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, everyone should check it out. It launches on, on uh, Tuesday and it's uh, going to be a heck of a good time. Do the vampires uh, also have tight pants? This is very important. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. They they look like uh, somewhere between like a greaser and 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 someone from um, Stand By. What's the Stand By Me? But it's got vampires instead. Lost Boys. Oh, uh, I was, yeah. was going to say I was getting lost. Yeah. <laughs> this seems very Lost Boys. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was getting real Lost Boys vibes. One yeah. of the stretch goals is the Are We the Baddies supplement that I'm writing, um, oh. and <laughs> where you actually get to play as Hecna's minions trying to ruin and corrupt um, some heroes that are wreaking havoc in the in the, in the the carnival. So uh, yeah, cool. help us get to that stretch goal. Check it out on Tuesday. And that's it, I think. Awesome, thank you. Ryan. Yeah, so I'm Ryan. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the one true K and you can find my games on at uh, archon.itch.io. And I have most recently been working on, um, well, collaborating with uh, Felix Isaacs on the game The Wild Sea, which is about uh, wild sailors uh, atop a treetop sea. The whole world has been consumed by, by flora, and now people are just trying to make it in this new and strange world. So, like, weird fantasy vibes. Um, it's got some great art you can find uh the free playtest document at the wild uk. awesome cat tax cat tax being paid <laughs> um yeah there you are giving i say this every time you're giving so much away for free like <laughs> the quality of this content is already amazing in the playtest plus all the art is like it's a finished product on its own i can't wait to see what the final thing looks like oh there's there's so much that has that's going on behind the scenes. Um, the playtest document has six posts, which is like a character classes, basically. Uh, there are another eight, plus a few more being playtested. Uh, tons of content for making your own uh, material to go, like how, how to make your wild sea just really be what you want it to be. So there is a lot planned, a lot to come, and uh, yeah. Keep an eye on it. All that plus cactus people. Just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm partial to the gal, the mushroom people. That makes sense. It's really cool. <laughs> it does. It all It all looks really, really, really good. Y'all. <laughs> yeah. Y'all should absolutely check it out. I was trying to get it up, but um, I've posted, I've posted Ryan's itch.io in the chat, and you can find everyone's Twitter in the chat, and if you watch later around YouTube's, I'll try and have everyone's links down below. Um, I have to remember to get specifically that one. Because <laughs> um, that game looks so heckin' good, like everyone's saying. Uh, but next we're gonna go over to Sam! Hey, Sam! Hi! I'm Sam, at Sam on Damiel on Twitter, and, uh... This is weird, but I think my favorite part was getting the eye from Jewel. <laughs> Normally, I prefer <laughs> eyes to stay in their heads. <laughs> but uh, that was really touching, and I'm honestly touched. Other favorite part was where I spent, like, 
10 minutes feeling really broken up about making that terrible choice. It was so bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can find me on the internet, uh, especially also on Tuesday, playing Burn Bright with Jess on Salty Sweet Games. Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Every Tuesday. Heck forever. Yeah. Maybe not forever. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not forever. For the foreseeable. <laughs> but for as long as we know for now. Yeah. <laughs> we have been told of no end, and now I am just curious. <laughs> I have been. There's no end point forever. <laughs> well, forever then, I guess. <laughs> There's no level cap or anything, right? You can no, just keep no. playing. No, you can yeah. just keep going. I mean, 100- there's like 40 story paths or something, but you can oh also my make your God. own story paths. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Forever. I love it. <laughs> and it's sci-fi, so we can definitely do some timey-wimey stuff. So it's definitely forever. Y'all, you heard it here yeah. first. Um. Sorry, kid, I'm Lauren. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to inform Ken and Lauren about this. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. I love it. Thank you. And next up is Sharon. Hello, I am Sharon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Chu underscore Baca. Um, I know I had mentioned this last time, but uh, the unprepared one shot from last week got moved, got rescheduled to this month. Uh, so on September 29, I think it is, the last Tuesday of the month, I will be on twitch.tv slash chromatic chimera playing Tail, Scale, and Bone, which is the mermaid version of Big Feather, Big and, Feather bone. and Bone. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I have a whole nother month to grow up my hair for this mermaid <laughs> one shot. It'll be great. That, that was the actual reason. You, Everyone had to be ready to be a mermaid. Maximum yeah, mermaid. I have, to, I have to learn how to curl my hair and uh, like put some fun colors in it before. So that, that was why we had to move to this month. Exactly. Perfect. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, you can find all everyone's links over in the chat. Go follow all these cool people and all the cool stuff that they are getting up to. Uh, if you watch over on YouTube, I'll put it down below. And if you're here watching live go check out the YouTube and follow there. And if you're watching on YouTube, come check out the Twitch and see that. It's all cyclical and I'm just gonna cycle y'all back. It's <laughs> the way of things. Uh, but yeah, I'm Jess. You can find me at go underscore JG in pretty much all the places online. Um, and like Jordan said, we are doing regular Fiasco Fridays uh, rotating with uh, Indie Game Spotlights because we love, we love to show off and play uh, all sorts of indie tabletop role-playing games, um, as well, uh, in, like, 30 minutes, I'll be back here with my bestie, and we'll be going into space, because we play Destiny on, uh, Saturdays, uh, tomorrow, we'll be returning to Borderlands 3 playthrough Siren Song, where we do all sirens all the time, um, and then in the evening, it'll be, uh, space again! Time for space, it'll be Conspiracy in the Stars, our Dark Matter, uh, game um, where my group doesn't trust me at all um you know and that's fair that's fair enough <laughs> but i didn't i didn't name the camping because consp- that's the name of the camp anyways it's not my fault is my point <laughs> you're the victim <laughs> yeah it's me <laughs> that's what i'm gonna say but yeah uh if you haven't already hit the follow button so we can hang out we do so many different games on this channel uh go check out these people all the cool stuff they're doing everything they're making everything all the games they're playing, come hang out with me and Sam over on Salty Sweet Games, and just follow that channel in general, because there's lots of cool stuff. Um, thank you so much to Roll20 for their Roll20 Spotlight program, for being awesome, heckin' cool beans. Uh, and also, while this game was happening, I was doing a little thread of, like, what we were doing, and, uh, um, Roll20 is very interested, uh, Ryan, in your book romance, just so you know! They're very interested about it, and the entire already... website of Roll Twenty is yeah. Yes. All of Roll, all of Roll Twenty is is very and interested. And they're right. <laughs> they should be. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Yeah, and um, and 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 uh, Tyrone Rick and Deckard, the makers of this awesome, awesome game. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and don't forget to come back uh, for our finale on Halloween, where we were give, giving away another. Um, 
everything PDF bundle, uh, which is literally everything. So make sure you are here um, all the time, but especially for that finale on uh, Halloween, because uh, we're giving it away and you want it because it's amazing. So yeah, that's that's it for now. Like I said, normally we'd go raid something, but like I said, I'll be back here in 30 minutes. So, you know, if you want to go to space with me and Dustin, <laughs> just be back here <laughs> at 6 p.m. EST. Uh, and we'll hang out with you some more. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much. Thanks, thanks everyone for playing. Thanks,